All right, welcome back to another episode of Health, Wealth, and the Ultimate Self. I have a special guest, uh, Rob Coates, health uh, entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, and I just found out a best-selling author of the book, Connect and Grow Rich. So always learning something new about you. So I really appreciate you uh, jumping on and being a part of our podcast. Thank you. I'm glad to, very glad to be here. And uh, no, I know it took a while to get this lighting and everything together, uh, but we're going we gonna, to we gonna do it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's all right. You're 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 not in your normal setup, so I appreciate you jumping on while you're you're traveling here. So, um, so we met like two months ago. I think it was back in July, and again, I just had a, a big respect for your energy, your mindset, and I think to me, I think that's where you know you gravitate towards people that you know, again like give you the energy, and I think you're just you're one of those people that bring uh, positive and good energy into the room, and that's the first thing I noticed about you. Likewise, I, I, it was really, I was just, you know, getting on the journey of the, the peptides and yeah. you were awesome because you had a wealth of information and all the words that seemed so big. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, you were great because all you did was I asked you questions. I think we had dinner, you know, the whole night, like, well, what about this? And what about that? <laughs> and uh, That's where we had the synergy because we both want to help people. We love helping people. And as far as getting like down to like, you really knew about the labs and you helped me with getting like more extensive labs into looking into, all right, where's this, where's the problem with these health things come from? You know? So that's one thing I appreciated about you. You know, you were always a giver in that respect too. So thank you. Well, I appreciate it. And just again, I wish you were in Dallas or in the area so we could uh, have more of those dinners and talks, but again, oh. we'll have to make it happen. Miami's not a, a bad spot to have to go visit. No, it's not too bad. It's not no, it's not too bad. So I think the the biggest thing, so tell me, you know, I, you know, I got the, hey, what you're doing right now kind of version of what you're into. I know you're in, in the healthcare field, uh, medical field. Um, how did you get started? Like kind of what, you know, how did you first put your feet in the kind of the healthcare field? Like, and how did you get to your books? I think you said you wrote the book back in 2006. So there's obviously something back. 18 years ago, sparking a fire within you. Oh, yeah. I think that fire sparked um, when I was 10. You know, I remember being uh, in church. My mother was a pastor. Uh, she wasn't like the ma main pastor. She would be like the one that's on the side, you know, of the pastor. And uh, she was like, um, I, I was. it was offering. And I remember asking my father. My father used to be so, he was always so tight. And I asked him for money for the offering plate. And he was like, I don't have a doc. And I just knew, I said, this probably isn't going to go the way <laughs> that I want this to go. So I better start making my own money. And uh, that night I asked uh, my mother, you know, to be my first investor. And I think we went to like Family Dollar. Things were really a dollar and stuff back then. Yeah. And probably some candy. And I set up something in the garage. And that was my first entrepreneur experience at 10 years old, uh, selling candy, um, you know, out of the garage. And I learned how valuable entrepreneurship was when I think I wanted to play and I had a friend who wanted to get some candy, but didn't have the money. So I was like, Hey, well, just watch this and be here. And once you sell this, you can come out. And that's where I've learned the value. Oh, I could make money at the same time and uh, not have to uh, be there. And that kicked off. I said, Oh, I love this. This is great. You know, I'm always going to try to do things where I'm not particularly doing the work, but I can connect the dots. So that's what uh, started it from then. And then uh, growing up, one of five, um, I'm number four, right? So three older sisters, one brother. Uh, then I had my baby brother who was like, you know, the baby boy. And, you know, when you're a middle child, you always want that validation and approval from your parents. Mm -hmm. And Me, I always figured that, you know, if I'm successful, maybe that'll make my parents, make people love me more. So for me, that was like, I got to figure out a way Cause I, I, you know, my parents weren't the, you know, I love you, uh, I hug you, like they're more like I did this. You gotta, you know, pr you know, shelter and things like that, and you, I provide for you, so that's my love. But um, I always wanted like kind of more affection and things like that, and mm -hmm. I figured that would be the way, you know, even though now I know you're good enough, you know, just being who you are. But that's what started. It really started for me just wanting to, to uh, feel loved and. Even though it was a house full of people, it was seven of us in a three-bedroom three house. I didn't have a bedroom until I was in 11th grade. Um, 
you know, I was just, I always felt alone. No matter how many people were there, I always felt like I was by myself. And success, being driven, those things like books, YouTube, Rich Sack, you know, Poor Dad was the first book that really sparked it. And I always knew that I was just supposed to be wealthy. Like I've always felt, you know, even though we didn't have <laughs> anything, I always knew like, no, I got a rich appetite. I got a rich taste. So I just got to work hard to get it. So that's what sparked the drive. But in my 20s, I did uh, multi-level marketing. I was really uh, successful in that uh, in that space. Taught me a lot. Taught me a lot about sales. Um, you know, people, networking, things like that. And um, from there, at 24, I started a networking group called Network Your Life. And mm -hmm. Network Your Life, you would, uh, you know, I would have these events where people would come and exchange information and opportunities. And things like that and i would get like a setting i like to find like a really nice restaurant or or a club that's not open on that day and i just make it really sexy i get it i get it i get a jazz band and um things like that i get a jazz band and i set it up in like tables because i was like when i ever am at these places people just don't most people don't know how to network like it's yeah. like the same thing and it's like people that's putting cards in but i said this is not effective so I've always been like, all right, let's, how can we be, you know, a more solution oriented and let this work? And um, I did it and I did it for two years. I would get other speakers to come because I was really too shy back then. And I would have big speakers come and I got like more credibility because, you know, who I was bringing them. And then, um, and after two years of doing it, I went entrepreneur of the year for my events. It was uh, here in New York and LA. And uh, we had a team of people, of my great friends that helped me. And then from there, I was talking to a girl that was a publisher, and she's like, well, you should write a book. And I was like, okay, all right, I'll do that. And something happened, and she, you know, she never got around to help me, but I wrote it. It took me about 10 months to uh, to get it together and um, came out when I was 26. So I came out when I was 26, and what's funny from that, originally, I just said, all right, I had Facebook. I don't even know if it was Instagram back then, but it was uh – -huh. You know, I was like, all right, well, I thought everybody was going to buy the book because I had it. And that wasn't the case. So I said, <laughs> I need to start speaking. So I did public speaking for like two, three years. Um, and then, um, yeah, I mean, I can keep going on and on. But like when I was 30, um, when I was 30, I moved to Houston. And on the way to Houston, when I had nothing, when I had just got married, um, which is another crazy story. I got so many stories, but I don't want to take up with them. <laughs> um, how I got married, it was like, it was, for, it was a shotgun wedding. It was crazy. My mother was dying. She said that was her last wish. So I, I did it in less than a week. And, you know, December 22nd, you know, I get married. Then she dies right after Christmas. And then, you know, I'm so broke. I'm like, okay, what are we going to do? We moved to Houston with um, my wife at the time, her mother in Sugar Land, Texas. And one of my best friends, Josh Ross, comes and says, hey, you need to look into something called compound pharmacy. And that's what got me into healthcare. Because before then, all I did was networking, direct, you know, network marketing, yeah. like things like that. And then when I got in healthcare and people didn't necessarily have to buy, you know, pay to get in, they could just use insurance. When I found out that, like, oh, insurance is going to pay for everything. It went from, you know, nothing really to nine months. I had everything I ever wanted. You know, like it was, you know, I remember that I had a 2002 BMW X5, 300,000 miles. And, you know, my first car I got was a Rolls Royce van. You know, it was like, I'm extreme, you know. So, like, if I'm going <laughs> to, you know, I'm going to do a big, like, my first house I got was 20,000 square feet. You know, it was, you know, the first house I ever owned in my name. All right. It took me to 30, but like, 22 car garage, it was just, it was crazy, you know, so I'm uh, <laughs> when I do things, I do it extreme and I go all out. And um, yeah, that's what got me in healthcare, you know, a decade ago. And I went from, you know, compound pharmacy, pharmacy related things where you tailor make uh, specific products for um, people to labs, to our own personal injury clinics, uh, to restaurants, to clubs, to now I have a wound care business called uh, CarePath Biologics where we help patients that have, you know, amniotic, um, I mean, we help patients with amniotic skin grafts that have like um, 
Fort Osters, they have hard to heal wounds. Yeah. My other business uh, is, is is peptides, you know, uh, care, uh, you know, pyramid peptides, which is probably, you know, one of my favorite things to do now because more than ever, I know health is wealth. And I've just been fascinated by this whole regenerative medicine, peptide world, putting things in your body that naturally are already in your body. But it's like, I know scientifically, like once we get labs and things like that, that this will work. Like, and I love that, you know, it's not a guesswork. Mm -hmm. It's spot. Okay. If you're deficient in this, we can get this. So um, that's been my, my, one of my, one of the best things I love doing now because everybody needs. It. Well, I think it's, it's interesting. Do you think, you know, so you said you started with kind of, you know, the multi-level marketing piece, which, you know, with that, like, there's a lot of like, you know, sweat equity that you have to put into that in terms of building relationships. Yeah. So I think that really ultimately builds the foundation because if you can be successful in that, and then you move into something that's medical, again, it translates, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I think um, the... Like what I learned in never marketing direct selling, it was amazing. It was so fun. Um, sometimes people have um, a negative uh, connotation about um, never marketing sometimes because, you know, maybe sometimes how people are getting in and they're excited and they try to like, they feel like they're getting sold to. But as far as like the learning curve, the friendships that I've built, the relationships that I have, like why I know how to sell. Why I'm not, like, it taught me more than college. It taught me more than personal development, like, mm -hmm. I mean, like I start reading because of, you know, network marketing um, and the relationships and sales. These are things you carry all throughout your life. So I think a lot of people, um, they didn't have it from various backgrounds. This is like your hard not likes, how you learn, how do you get over like selling and comfortable with people. Uh, Cause once you can do direct selling, if you can make money in network marketing, everything else is easy. You know, mm -hmm. like everything else is, 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 was really fun. Like I didn't, I barely made over a hundred thousand after being involved in network marketing 10 years. And once I got in healthcare in less than seven, eight months, I was at a hundred thousand a month, you know? So like, it really taught me a lot without that. So um, in sales in general and just good people, I wouldn't be where I am today. Do you, um, if, what do you think's the biggest part, you know, again, for people listening, you know, it, I think when it comes to sales, like, do you have any advice that makes you a better person? Like when it comes to selling and I, cause I think the connotation of selling, like whether it's you go to a restaurant, it's still, it's always exchange of something. Right. And we call that you know, a sell, but it's like some things feel more, you know, kind of forced, but it's always happening, whether it's advice, like you're always trying to sell a thought or, or something or regardless of what it is, your doctor is like, Hey, you should do this. It's still some type of tactic to encourage you to, to do an exchange. And yeah. do you think there's one kind of trait or kind of skill that makes you a better salesman than others? Or what do you think is the most fundamental? Yeah. Well, I went to school for psychology. Right. And I've always, I don't know. I didn't tell the story, but I started cutting hair when I was 12 years old. So, um, with cutting hair, when you're a, a barber, right? And I've been self-taught. I've never went to college, you know, for any of these things, um, or as far as cutting hair. Actually helped put me through college. But you, when you get a chance to, like, just listen, you know, and, you know, when somebody, you cut somebody's hair, that's, like, a very, for men, it's, like, an intimate time because you you get to go so close <laughs> and they crush you with their face, right? And these are normally relations that you build. Like, when you get a barber, people don't normally, you know, switch barbers all the time it's like cheating if you you know have a barber so that taught me just the power of listening uh the power of trust it taught me um you know i just built so many great relationships because when you take somebody from ashy to classy or you know you help them you know when you, when you look at you feel good when they come in one way that you can like talk and they can like share certain things that they normally wouldn't say at home it's kind of like um you know they say like it's a poor man's golf course. You know what I'm saying? Because you get to go and talk <laughs> and have conversations. And that for me, like, has always been intriguing because this the power of listening and understanding people um, from an empathetic level. Like, a lot of times people are listening to respond and not listening to hear, right? And it's so, so much more powerful when you actually can get in and, like, quiet your thoughts, quiet your mind, 
and just see it through this other person's eyes. And when you understand, you know, it's all about philosophy. Like a cell is a transfer of energy. So that's mm -hmm. all you're doing is transferring your energy because either you're getting sold on why you shouldn't or should do something or not, right? Either way, you know, it's either going to be yes from you or yes from them. Um, and once you understand, this is what you, this is what it takes to play the game. Like if you want to be, <laughs> if you want to have anything, even with getting a woman, right? Like you have to be the best person in her eyes for her to choose you. Like, there's no no way around that. You don't just get it because you're a good person. Like, as men, we got to bring our, for us to be able to have value, we got to bring, I mean, we got to really bring value to the marketplace for us to really accomplish or get things that most people can't, right? So we can't just come in and be like, oh, I'm a nice person. You know, like, no, you have to build yourself up. So a sell is, when you look at it from the perspective of this art, if you have something you're doing, you're passionate about, and you, and you, and you love it, like, are you doing this giving you're really you're pulling somebody to um instead of pushing like and instead of yeah. making somebody doing it, you're pulling them to like even with like healthcare with um uh, with peptides, right? Like when I'm listening to you and I was telling you that one of my close friends, my cousin actually, you know, had you know uh, a stroke, you know, and I love this, I love him. You know what I'm saying? This is one of my favorite cousins uh two days ago, two, three days ago. And I'm saying, what can we do to to you know is anything now because right now at this moment you can't use I was saying the right side of his body and you taught me how to play piano and you're like you give me all these suggestions are you selling me on things that we have to do or are you just telling me you know or you know you're more of a, a talesman than a salesman right so you're saying yeah. I've been on this this is another way that we need to do this we need to strengthen this once we find this so I think it's when you're doing something that you you ultimately believe in it's it's not a sale it's a tell. I think that's that's kind of where when you you know I asked you that question because I think every time I you know talk to people who are good entrepreneurs understand the psychology that the yeah, everybody like that gets it is like you just listen like you just shut up and you listen mm -hmm. and and again and because a lot of times people don't get that you know if you want to go to and you want to feel it go to a car lot and be sold a car there's a lot of people that just kind of come up and it's very, you know, for some, it feels very transactional. It's just like, Oh, they just want my money. It's just, they just want to get me. They don't, they're not really listening. They're, they're listening, but that's very superficial in my, Hey, what's your budget? Okay, cool. Like what call, like not really getting down into like, why do you want this car? Like, how will it make, you know, what do you need this for? Oh, you got family and kids. You want to feel safe and protected and maybe taking that time to listen. I think that's really unique. Cause I, I get that obviously from, from listening to you is you're very kind of, again, you listen well and I get, it makes sense that you're a good, you know, good business person from it. And cause again, it's, if you listen, then you'll get the empathy. You'll get the other kind of factors that people like, Hey, now I trust you. You're, you're actually listening to me. You're asking questions that are more secondary and tertiary kind of below the surface. You're, you're getting to know me. You're not, it's not just like, you just don't want my card to swipe. You actually want to take the time to get to know me. And I think that's, mm -hmm. you know, very critical. And I think, you know, being in the healthcare field, you know, the way we set up our office is like we bill like 30, 60, 90 minute blocks, two hour blocks, depending on the complexity, because we have to listen. And again, and for most people, they don't they're used to five to seven, seven minute visits with the doctor. And it's just very like superficial. And again, like I had this, you know, like, like two weeks ago, I went with somebody to a doctor's appointment and man, it was doctor comes in and again this is your traditional like medical model it's like five to seven minutes they're telling this person that hey you're, you're going to need surgery and it's just so like superficial and then they're like all right you have any questions well I, you know, I just told you you need surgery i'm asking if you have any questions so you probably have a thousand thoughts going through your head and then they just walk out of the room and they're like we'll get you booked for surgery and you know as it sets in the person's like man this is a lot to think about and now they have more questions, but the doctor's gone and they're like, kind of like almost anxious from it. And again, now they're like, they're not really comfortable with the surgery. And I got it. So that kind of, after that, we walked out, we left the office. I'm like, I mean, I think you could do that better, feel less rushed. But again, the way that the system works is whether you spend an hour with that patient or seven minutes, they're probably going to reimburse you the same under the, the insurance model. And it's kind of one of those limitations I think is hurting healthcare pretty bad. Yeah. It, 
again, it's hard to get people to change their habits because you got to sell them on why you need to change. And to do that in five or seven minutes, whether it's surgical or lifestyle or exercise, it takes time. Mm -hmm. it takes I, listening. Yeah, I think what you're saying when I listen to you is that it's a book that says everybody loves to buy, but people hate to sell, right? And like when you go into a grocery store, let's say Whole Foods, if somebody immediately comes in and says, hey, can I help you? You're like, no. Even though you may need help, you're like, <laughs> no. You don't like being like, you don't like being rushed. And right now, I think trust is at an all-time low because it seems like a lot of people don't really care. But when you find somebody that cares, right, or you feel like they care, people open up. You know, they open mm -hmm. up because I think a lot of people want to be loved and really cared about. But I just think it's this fear thing now. It's like, I don't want to let you in because I don't want to start trusting you and you hurt me, right? Or you take advantage. And there's so many people, or we let experiences from our past um, sometimes dictate our future because we're still living in it. And that that mm -hmm. experience was just a lesson. It wasn't meant to be like every time you think about something to you know bring it up. It's like you get smarter, you get better, and you move forward. But like you said, with healthcare in general, and that's why I love personalizing these things to like people because when you personalize something, you figure out okay, it's not a one size fits all. Make make me feel special, right? Mm -hmm. And I think people have this. You know, everybody has this little, this, this something inside of them that says, all right, make me feel good. Make me feel special. Because um, when people truly know, um, it's not what you say, it's not what you do, but it's how you make me feel. And mm -hmm. the legal people, when they understand that that's all you got to do. And if you want to be wealthy, just do that with a lot more people. Like you make a lot of people feel good and you'll get the things that you want. But in healthcare, you're right. It is so quick and such about money, 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 insurance, things like that, that it does get uh, misconstrued. But it's great. It's people like us that's out there that's, that's, that's changing that culture. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's it. It's just insurance is the way I, I mean, I try to tell patients too, is insurance is a very sick care, acute care model. Yeah. But what's going to fix why you're getting the sick care is this model over here that's going to be more on your, you know, slow down, figure out where things might have got started what's contributed to them, what are kind of exacerbators, and, and there might be more than one uh, or might be multiple. And then how do you start to unravel that? It's not a quick fix. It may take six months. It may take a year. It may take two years. Who knows? To unravel the patterns of behavior that led to the kind of the acute scenario. Right. Right. It's going to take some time. Like you can't, you know, it takes you five years to get to the, where you actually see it manifest or external. Um, but you don't know that, you know, internally you've been, you've been doing this for years and it's like, it's not something going to be quick that's it's fixed it at all. You're right. Like, and, and I think that's something we, people just have to understand, um, uh, with healthcare, when they start taking certain th different things, everybody's body is different. And I know once you start optimizing your body, uh, hormonally and, uh, you start getting the right things in your body, like allow it to take time and be consistent. And I think that's even with success, even with so many other things, it's all really about you just being consistent and doing something daily, right? Mm -hmm. And like rocket scientist for somebody, when you see somebody that's at an amazing level, it's like, it's not that a lot of these people don't even want that. It just came with them being consistent and them being, you know, persistent over time that now they got so much practice that they're amazing, but it's something that happens over time, you know, and you just got to give yourself time and be patient and know that, one thing I love, um, it's an actress, I think her name is Jennifer uh, Love Hewitt, uh, but she says, you got to be happy on the way to happy, right? Like you mm -hmm. can't, a lot of times we think success is moving targets. So when we get, all right, when I get the Rolls Royce is when I'm successful, right? When I get the house, when I get the jewelry, when I get, no, you're successful the moment you start on that journey. You say, you know what? I'm going to do this because I just believe it. There's something inside of me that's telling me I should do this and I'm going to follow that. That to me is success um yeah that to me is, is is success well i think if you picture you know you out of college to you and getting the house and the rolls royce like you were you know you were at this point to this point that's all growth in between that step and there's so many little steps of growth every day every month every year you're you know you're acquiring knowledge to change your outcomes constantly and yeah. i think but so many people are like fixated on i don't have the house yet or i don't have the, the dream car yet 
And they get so distracted from that little, like not having the satisfaction of the outcome, but not and missing the realization that they're building successful habits and outcomes the entire way. And <laughs> like this- social media, or like that social media oh, f- does that. Like social media, oh my God. And, and then too, like with that, that was when I was there. I'm 41. I know I look 21 people out there, uh, but that was, I've, I've had it all and lost it. So- yeah. Like, you, you, you know, three you, times. how many times? Three times. You know, I made eight figures and lost it three times. You know, and a lot of people quit after that first time. Like, some of the experiences, you know, and we got to do more of these podcasts. Cause, I mean, if I just start telling you other stories, because I like telling stories more than just like facts, because people can relate. I'm more yeah. related now. Once you hear, oh shit, like, what, what, <laughs> I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Because when you get, some money finding like you work all your life to get get this get the stuff that externally like all right you feel accepted you feel appreciated now and when you get it it's like oh but the people i neglected a lot of people along the way um or my true friendships or friends to get this all right or you get it then the people think you change right so with success with having these things it's a lot of trauma that gets there too and you don't know until you lose it all like when you when a person has lost it it made it i think they're, uh, I'm gonna say a bad person because people can be good, but you're really humble. You really know the value of things once you don't have it anymore. You'd be like a woman, right? You can have an amazing woman and you can get it all. Then you start feeling big headed and you're the man. And then when you lose it, you'd be like, oh, you know, oh man, like I lost yeah. that. It was, was amazing. But guys, it takes us a while. It takes us usually to lose it, um, to value it, you know, and that's just the same thing too. Uh, what can we say? Who trying? Who's the clip I saw? Like you, it, it takes losing everything to realize your true value, your true friends. Was it? It might have been Trump saying it, like at like an old old post <laughs> from the eighties. Yeah. But it's true, right? Like, yeah. you know, who's around you when you're at your worst, supporting you, versus when you're at your best? Like, mm. if the same people aren't around you when you're at your kind of down spot, like that's a that's a telltale sign of like. Yeah, who, who are your true friends? Or even in the worst of the worst, they're still your friend. They don't care because again, it's not about the monetary or the the things. It's about the what you bring to them from a relationship standpoint and what they can bring back to you. And I think going into that same piece when you talk about if you lose it, but the entire value you've put into like your meaning in life is about attaining something that can be lost. Yeah. Then if you lose it, like you're devastated versus realize like, well, shit, like I've made it once I can make it again. And then on top of it, you can't bring it when you're, you're dead and you don't, (laughs) that money ain't going with you, the the car or the house. And I think that's the unique thing. When you look at like people like you or, you know, other entrepreneurs, like they're not so much tied to necessarily the money, like that's a plus, but it's the journey to get there. It's the these the puzzle they're solving to go from you know starting a business to making it successful mm-hmm. not so much the money that they thrive off of it's like seeing the the, the little victories to get there and I, again as you know it's starting one business and starting more that's the same thing like i get that piece of like oh this was this is fun like starting businesses like it's stressful but it's a fun type of stress because it's <laughs> it's equations it's problem solving it's growth like it's uncomfortable at times but it's like that the moments of where you're uncomfortable and then you get comfortable like that is you learning and, and and having massive growth that you had to be kind of stressed out a bit to go through yeah yeah and and like you, one of the things you said keep when you said when you like you lose it all you realize that you had it all you know the whole time and i say mm-hmm. that the people when you find the friends and the people that are there for you that you th- you're doing all this to make people love you, not knowing that people love you just because who you are. And then what's even more important than that is you realize, hold on, you do it because you love you. You know, yep. it t- took me a while to understand uh, is that you got to have love for yourself first. Like you have to have, if I can get somebody in order of success, like you got to love you more than anything. Because if you don't love yourself, how can you truly love? You're not going to be able to love somebody else. Correct. You can't give from an empty cup. Right. So you have to be able to um, love who you are and and know that you're worthy 
um, this period, you're worthy just because of who you are. You know what I'm saying? So that's number one. Then second is your health. You got to take care of your health because people spend the first half of their lives accumulating money to get wealth. And then the second half, giving all their money to <laughs> the doctors and hospitals because they never took advantage of their health. So I think you, a person taking the time now with a young and building healthy habits, like starting to eat right, like is is sexy. You know what I'm saying? Taking care of your body. Just because you, I thought this because like I was, I got all these cars and jewelry and all this stuff. Like, and women never said anything about it, right? Because, you know, they, 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 they like baller bellies or guts and things like that. That's what I'm thinking. Then I'm like, hold on, I'm, I got sleep after you. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm waking up 10 times during the night. Um, you know, I went and got my check, um, my blood pressure check. This is less than four months ago. And my, um, not just my, my blood pressure was high, but like my A1Cs is 8.5, you know, like, and I'm looking like seeing me, you wouldn't even know that you'd be like, okay. Cause nobody really said like, and I always ate a lot of, when I eat, I eat like a king, I eat everything I uh, used to, but like now, <laughs> Like when I, you know, got on certain peptides and things like that. And I said, you know what? I'm going to get in the best shape of my life. And I changed it. And I and I changed it because of my son. My parents, both my parents died. My mom died at 60. My dad died at 62. I mean, my, my mom died at 60. My dad died at 60. Now, my mom was 10 years older than my dad. So my mom died, passed in 2012. And then my dad died of a broken heart uh, in 2018. Right? So for me, I always felt... By the time I started making money, it was really sad. Like I, I got all this money and I was depressed because mm -hmm. I got it to, you know, you want to take care of your, your parents. You want to take care of your mom. You know, so I get all this stuff and you realize that I'd get every I'd get everything back just to have my mom again. You know, so you don't value like, okay, yeah, you don't have the stuff, but how much time can you spend with your mom? Now, you know what I'm saying? Like you're going to see her twice a year, three times a year, because you're trying to get it. And it's like that's the, that's so um, it's so not important, you know, in the grand scheme of things. And then with them not taking care of their health with certain things that they, they didn't know and things like that. But it's it's really sad because I didn't have, you know, you know, my son didn't meet his grandparents on my side, you know. Um, and there's all these, these things you feel like you feel alone. Like when you when you lose people and I've lost a lot of people, you just feel alone. So you get this stuff and it's like you the stuff ain't going to. It is not gonna give what you want ultimately, which is love, which is which is which is peace. The internal things that are important. So for me, when I was going through this journey, I was talking to a friend, and he was he told me a story about uh, a guy that was like 50. He was a billionaire. He had a seven year old son, and he died. Just had a heart attack, and he's like, "Now nah, look at this son. Now I want you to look at your son. You know, your son is eight years old. Like, who who's gonna raise and love your son like you?" You know, who's going to do that? Why would you even play with it, that possibility, and not take care of yourself for him? That's very selfish when you think about it. And from there, I, I got, I was like, you're right. And I got angry and I said, I'll never let, you know, my son feel the things I felt, you know, like, you know, and, and just because uh, you feel like a void, you know what I'm saying, when you lose a lot of people. And even like as my friends and close friends just keep like passing now, I'm 40 and I, cousin passed this year of that diabetes type things and it's just like i hate it you know what i'm saying so am i gonna get angry and do something about it and create something where i can help my family um and, and the thing is i gotta do it first because i don't do it first who gonna listen to me right so when they see me i'm in the gym and i started eating eating like cooking my own food which is another passion of mine but i'm doing all these things now because i have to do it one to be an example but Ultimately, for my son, I got to set good habits, and it's about it's about the future. It's about future generations, and why make all this if you can't enjoy it? And then you have to instill certain things in your kids that, yeah, even if he was left a lot of money, what are you gonna do with it? You know, because kids, he ain't got the struggle like <laughs> like I had. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. all the financial skills. So, what are you gonna do? Um, so I have to. You got to take care of me. You no, know, take care of me so it's a better we. You know what I'm saying? We have to yeah. get to the mentality of taking care of your health first, not all the things you got to do. You got to take care of that. Like your life, like everything, like, like it matters first, you know, because when you leave this world, there's so much things. Um, there's so many people that you affect that you don't know you're affecting. Um, and 
it's you know you just have to just do better because people really do love you out there so so you brought up a couple of points like you you work so hard when you're young to make this like money and let's say it's a fortune or you turn it into something great guess you know what's the number one thing that bankrupts people over 65 is healthcare costs yeah right? I was gonna say divorce, but uh, <laughs> well, I mean it probably doesn't help. But like, healthcare is the number one thing that leads to bankruptcy in the U.S. Oh, over the age of sixty-five. So it's like, really, what is it busting your ass while you, you know, kind of just ignore the things that's probably the biggest vulnerability across, you know, quality. Like again, same thing. You can have all the money in the world, but if all of a sudden at seventy you're so beat up, you're let's say hundred pounds overweight, you can't walk up the stairs at the, you know. The, in Greece to go sightsee, like what yeah. good is all that money? You, you can't even go enjoy the fruits of your labor because you neglected something that to me is the biggest yeah. indicator of wealth is your health. Like your, your health is the biggest wealth you could provide yourself. Man, It's your visit. It's your vessel to move about this world. And once, once it's done, it's done. And, you know, again, I think it's, it's interesting because, you know, I lost my dad at 11 in a, a car wreck. Uh, and then my, my mom died again. I, I wouldn't say broken heart, but all, you know, losing my, her husband at a young age and then having to raise three boys. And, mm -hmm. you know, she didn't really have to work up to that point where he died and all of a sudden had to figure things out. And mm -hmm. it was a lot of, and so the stress of that and yeah. but she, ended up, she passed away uh, from early onset dementia. Mm -hmm. also, right. And, and again, and, you know, kind of, that's one of my biggest passions of like, how do we take care of this to give us longevity? And the biggest thing to me, and I think it's the biggest way of people just passing off basically ownership of their health is, oh, it's just family history of this. Oh, it's just, you know, I'm getting forgetful. I'm just getting old. I'm like, that's bullshit. Like, right. <laughs> not making permissions and excuses for your health to degrade and fight for it. Because again, when you lose it, you don't realize how hard it was to get to somewhere. And again, and I know you you mentioned to to me, your cousin that had the stroke, right? Yeah. And I always say to patients, like picture when you're a baby and you have no idea how to walk and you're figuring that out. I think God puts a reason in that you don't remember the struggle of learning those basic fundamental skills. But when you're older and you have a stroke or a brain injury where you lose it and have to fight to get it back, you really appreciate how hard to get to something, but you had to lose it first. Yeah. So what, like to the person that hasn't lost it yet, like don't just give it up so easily to be like, let it be taken from you on a whim or gradually from, you know, if it's dementia, like that takes 20 years for somebody to get Alzheimer's to kind of be in full, full effect. So what are you doing for to prevent it or Parkinson's? You look at like somebody loses the sense of smell 10 years on usually typically before they start to lose their memory. But again, like, ah, it's not a big deal. It's like, you better start figuring these little warning signs out because we all have them, right? And like you said, you had a warning sign. You had your A1C flashing at you on labs and you had a choice to make. Yeah. What am I going to do about it? Either I can own this, I can clean this up, or... I just kick the can around and say it's somebody else's problem. Like, hey, you know, family history, cousins got it. Just nothing I can do. Like, I'm a victim. And mm. I think that to me is like, you know, it's just I feel bad for patients when they feel like they, they just allow themselves to fall into the victim role versus like, no, no, this is going on. And I'm also the solution. I think that is such a better mindset. And like, again, like you said, in the dating world or health wise, like it's a much more attractive trait to me seeing somebody that takes ownership of every aspect of their life. Yeah. One of my favorite things I, I, I heard somebody say, I can't take credit, but he says, um, you got an expensive outfit on, but a cheap body. <laughs> and people have these, you know, you see people that have these expensive, these nice things, which is, I love it. Hey. Have all of it, you know, um, but also to, you know, like work on your your body. Like I just think it shows, like it just shows, just when it just shows so many different things about yourself when you just start to take your yourself. Um, you know, it shows that you love yourself. Like it shows that I just think it's it's qualities. Like now, when I was, you know, going through little stages of, I think we all get depression and we go through things. Like people think just because you have some um, 
you look like you got some money or you have some success at certain points that we don't all go through the, through the same mental battles. And, you know, we got that inner person talking to us that you got to defeat on a daily basis. You got to kill that person in, in you. I mean, the, the negative side in you, because you got, I think, a fear and you have faith. So you got to always be strength, strengthening every single day, the faith, you know, mm -hmm. thing who you are. And, um, um, and I just really, really, would love to like, I think with us talking about it, like let's talk about some proactive steps on what people can do uh, to have better health, like what they can do right now and you know, what they can do um, that's not expensive. Cause sometimes people think when it comes to health, like everything is just, or right, I have to have my money, you know, I have to eat everything organic. I have to do all these things before, you know, let me get my money right. And then as I get my money, yeah. I'll do it. But I, you know, let's, let's give some, um, um, some viewpoints um, on how, let's say, a lot of people right now, um, a lot of people that have type two diabetes and they don't even know about. It. You know, I was yeah. walking around initially before everything got reversed with it and not knowing. You know, I had it as well. Um, and I always got these like I would see people when I would get certain things done, IDs, and you know, my my um, doctor time to say, hey, you know, you you right there, you know, you want. I'm like, I'm forty, I ain't about to whatever, you know, and I played it, but I didn't understand. I didn't have any, Matt, at all, the understanding that I have now just about just, one, how crazy sugar is and what that does and how everything breaks down to sugar and with insulin. Like, I understand all that stuff so much better now that I'm looking at, I'm counting calories. When I go, you know, even to Dave and Buster's for my son, I'm looking at the menu like 1,600, you know how many miles I got to run? <laughs> one for that, like, and nutrition has played such a big part even before the, active you know things you're doing um it plays such a big part but what's some some ways matt that people can um what can well, they do simple I, I think eat at home right like especially like the whole idea i i don't have money to eat healthy i'm like yeah but you're going out to drink starbucks and put like all this stuff in there simplify and protect what's going into your body right I, again People like, what medicine, what peptide, what supplement can I take? I'm like, hey, you can take the best of the best, but what you put in your body is the very first thing. And so if you have the flexibility to do organic, great. If not, at least still put in healthy foods at first at home. Because the moment you go out to the restaurant, the restaurant has a margin that they want to make. And they may, hey, instead of giving you this, they're going to maybe put more kind of not great ingredients into it. And then start what, trying to clean up layer by layer, right? I think. What's Matt, that? What, what type of when we say healthy food? Let's be even more specific on like, you know, <laughs> what what can they be? What are they? What should they? How important is protein? Um, so, fat, and carbs. Like, let's so, let's go into. I think if you look right, I mean, we're we're making more obese and diabetic patients than ever before. We. Mm -hmm. You know, one to two percent increase every year on chronic disease. We have more and more people being diagnosed with chronic disease at a younger age. And so we have to kind of step back and look at like when did these patterns start to happen? You go back into like you go and you look at our food pyramid. Most people that work in the healthcare industry that actually make people get healthy off medications mm -hmm. will tell you the food pyramid is a bunch of BS. Yep. Pushed by people that depends still on medications to fix the problems off that food pyramid. And again, it's, you see it too online and a bunch of influencers like, Oh, you can eat whatever you want. Da, 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 da. It's just about calories in versus calories out. I'm like, look, when people have metabolic flexibility, yeah, you can eat crap and you can still burn. But what happens is the infl inflammation from the crap you put in slowly takes away your metabolic flexibility where you, it's not a matter of calories in, calories out anymore. Things have started to damage the cells, so they don't respond to glucose and insulin the same way. Now you start getting insulin resistance. Now you can do it by just flooding the body with too much glucose, but it can be, you know, there's certain things that damage your cells and your mitochondria. There's medications that do it. There's a whole host you know, of All these big words, man. My audience is going to be listening. I need you to break all that. You know, <laughs> insulin, what is, how does that yeah. It, but from a very simple standpoint, if you can hunt it, pick it, kill it, you should probably be able to eat it. If you understand how it got on your plate, it's probably not a bad thing, right? So again, your star of your plate should be protein, healthy fats, and then the smaller portion of your plate should be carbohydrates or, or your carbs, your fruits, your, your sugars. 
that's a very generalized approach without knowing a thing about your health. Now, there's a whole, there's a reason for like AIP diet, whole 30 diet, keto diet. There's a reason for those diets because that diet is coming in to try to repair where they got broken. Right. And so don't worry about that. Obviously, if that's what you need, then it needs to be more specific. But from a very general standpoint, like if you can hunt it, pick it, kill it, and you know how it's on your plate, then it's probably okay to eat. But if there's words like in the ingredients, like if you bought like a thing of green beans, but there's 12 chemicals on there that you're like, I have no idea what this like polysorbate, whatever is like, you probably shouldn't be putting it into your body. Right. Mm -hmm. I would just take that approach. It, it's very cost efficient, but the same thing. You go to Starbucks, you're going to spend $6 on a coffee, but tell me you don't have food to go to the grocery store to buy it, you know, to a healthy meal. I, I argue your priorities are the problem versus really like the financial aspect to it. Because I think, again, you have to prioritize where you put your money. And again, if your priorities are straight, then you realize like, oh, the Starbucks is taking my health and dialing it down. And the food I'm going to buy at the grocery store to cook at home is dialing my health up. And over time, this is going to yield a, a better net investment to my my financial book, but also my my health. But again, I don't. If you can't eat grass fed meat, then don't worry about. It. But still, eating the chicken that you least know is just chicken, not chicken plus batter and fried in some dirty oil, then you're still simplifying it down. Even those oils, I didn't know how bad. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, autumn oils was too. Like yeah. that's crazy. I also see like nutritionists like. Oh, the studies show, I'm like, guess what? 93% of studies done by the industry on their oils say they're good for you. The other side, over half of them say they're bad for you. So it's like, which one are you going to believe? And again, a basic principle in research. If I'm trying to do research, let's say like, again, I own a product and I want to show it's healthy for you. I should have no ties to the research. I should give it off to somebody that has financial ties and it's a complete independent study. But that's not what's happening. And again, you're looking at these things and they're being funded by the companies and being pushed that they're sold. Then we have to look at the fact that there's 80,000 chemicals on the face of this earth and roughly like more and more every year. I think it's 2,000 more a year. Only 25% have been tested by our EPA, right? And they really don't have to be tested until they are shown to be harmful. What's so EPA, we, what's that? What's EPA mean? environmental protection oh. aid right so they're, they're meant there to protect us from like big corporations yeah the problem is our government and these big corporations are sleeping together there there are so many financial ties when you look at lobbying and again that's a whole other podcast but when you look at and you look at ingredients what's allowed in our food and you go to europe and what's allowed you know the same box of fruit loops looks different than the box of fruit loops in Canada because Canada like hey look you can't put these food dyes in this food because it's bad for behavioral neuro neural development in kids and digestive function yet we still allow the same stuff and crap in our food here and you see it more and more in Europe like so again it's again if you want to trust in the right things happening, who are you going to trust? Like you're always going to listen to your, your gut and your instincts because you're going to be the most invested in your, your health outcomes, right? Not nobody else is going to be as invested in you or should they be, you should be the biggest advocate for your health. And, and unfortunately, when it comes to what's allowed in our food, I think that's where, you know, unfortunately there's people that are potentially, you know, for hire when it comes to these things. So again, a very simple rule, if you can hunt it, pick it, kill it, eat it. So yeah. Mix up your vegetables. The more colorful and diverse they are, the great. Make sure protein, if you want to weigh 180 pounds, make sure you're getting roughly 90% of that in grams of protein yeah. because one of the best indicators of how we're going to age is the lean body mass we keep as we age. I always ask people, do you want to look like the sprinter or the marathon runner when you're 80? I, I want to look like the sprinter. I want to look like I still have lean, like muscle mass where I can protect myself. If I fall, I got muscle on my glutes to protect my hip from fracturing. Right. And yeah. is after 40 and even 30, it gets harder and harder to put that muscle mass on. And one of the biggest things that helps us make sure we at least replenish and protect our muscle mass is our protein intake. So hmm. if, if you're thinking about it in very simplistic terms, every, you know, you eat three meals a day, each meal needs to at least have a 30 grams of protein in it as yeah. a, as a starting point. Now, that's 
probably going to work for a female, for you, for myself. When we have, you know, we're larger, we have more muscle mass on yeah. than some, we're probably going to have to fight a little bit harder and up our protein intake. But that to me is how I would try to just pick little wins. And I, maybe you just start off on protein, right? Hey, I'm, I'm going to aim for 30 grams of protein per meal. And I'm aiming for a total of 150 per day for the person that wants to weigh 170 pounds. That might be the first step. But by them focusing on protein, they fill up on protein before they fill up on the crap and the, the fried and the unhealthy stuff. Like that's usually too, if you focus on that first, then the appetite for the bad stuff goes down. So th those, again, it, it can be much more complicated. And I, again, I probably exact went way too long on it, but focus on protein, eat what you know, where it came from and, and start with that. Nice. Okay. And I would say like too, with me, where something I've been doing, uh, one is inter intermittent, intermittent, intermittent fasting between like um, um, 16 and eight, you know, so I fast 16 hours and I eat between eight, uh, eight hours. Um, I wait to have my meal because in the morning, I didn't know when you eat anything with sugars or carbs, it goes and raise your insulin, which is your fat storage, right? So, you know, if I do faster cardio or I do a walk or a run, um, what will start happening is I'll start burning the fat rather than, you know, storing something. So I don't eat anything till maybe like two o'clock. And then after two o'clock, I'll do things, meals that have between 50 to 60 carbs. So I do, I'm on a carnivore diet now. So I'll do six eggs. I'll do a steak or. I saw uh, your post the other day with like all the eggs on the plate. Not yeah. Yeah. Like avocado. And these, I hate avocado. You know what I'm saying? For the longest, but it's good fats. You know, I do butter. You know, I do the, um. Uh, all the, the good butters you're supposed to do. Um, I do, um, I don't do sugar drinks anymore. And I love sweets. I love sweets. I mean, the sweetest thing I probably eat now is probably this mango, right? Which I love mangoes. You know, I got a video eating mangoes. Um, <laughs> I think I, I saw it not too long ago. <laughs> I didn't know I was eating like that. It was so good. Like, it's, I hadn't had like sweets so long and I had a, a mango and it was like everything. But I do that. I don't eat, um, I try not to eat between two, three hours before I go to bed. And when you do eat, just go take a walk. Do a 10-minute walk, a 15-minute walk. Just be active. You don't have to be up working out all the time. Uh, but you do want to, you know, and we can also talk about this as well, like the, the GLP-1, 2s, and 3s, right? Ozempic, Monjaro, uh, Red of Truth Hide, um, things like that, Tess Moreland. But in that world, um, you have to make sure if you are taking any one of these things that you got to do cardio resistance, you know, you got to, I mean, um, cardio, um, cardiovascular activity and resistance training. Like you got to lift and up your protein, right? Like yeah. if you don't want the ozempic body, like, and, and cause again, at first, like I was not a huge fan of these meds, but then when you look at the studies that show people that went on these medications, but they also just did, or or they do. They, you look at somebody that just cuts calories and loses weights by you know significant caloric restriction. The amount of lean muscle mass is roughly the same. So again, your muscle mass is the biggest reservoir to dump glucose into it. So if you keep and put muscle mass on, it's going to keep and help you fight for insulin sensitivity and that relationship of being good at burning calories when you're in that fasted state. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think the, you know, so lift heavy stuff. I mean, that's one of those things like walking's great for helping your post meal blood sugar spikes, but you still need to continue to kind of fight to pull on those muscle fibers to continue to encourage them to, to grow. Yeah. Um, again, diet wise, I like intermittent fasting. The one thing I'll caution people when they do it in the window where you're eating your calories, let's say, Rob, you have a 2,000, uh, you burn 2,000 calories per day, or let's say you burn 2,200, but you're eating 2,000, so you're in a slight calorie deficit to lose weight, you're probably going to be okay. But you've got to still, like a lot of people when they intermittent fast, when the windows are eating, they're not getting enough calories in, because again, your body does not want you to starve to death or basically burn through. If you're not putting enough in, your body's like, I'm going to slow down my BMR, my basal metabolic rate. And the moment you eat above it, you may have lost five pounds doing intermittent fasting. Somebody's just like, boom, I just gained 10 by eating high amount, like 2,000 calories. Why am I gaining weight at 2,000? The problem is, so if you 
if you're doing the caloric restriction or intermittent fasting, it's, it, I love it. It's protective. There's, there's very good benefits, but you still have to make sure you're hitting enough calories in the windows you're eating, or else you're going to see thyroid and be- metabolic consequences that start to work against you. If you are, you know, if you're eating 800 calories over and over again, your body's going to slow down your metabolic rate. And Got so it. Got I, it. Makes sense. yeah, so that, I love it. It helps you clear up, you know, debris and bad protein it ups your autophagy which again is a very good master switch for kind of scavenging for bad actors in the body so it's all good yeah. but there's a good way to do it and there's a way where like you might kind of create a a weight mechanism that frustrates you if you overdo it so it's always like yeah i'm, I'm gonna eat in this window but i am still eating my two thousand calories in the window i'm doing it yeah and i think too like people give ozempic in these terms a bad name but it's not Ozempic or Manjaro to me that's doing it. It's the people that take it and people that abuse it, right? Because when you're on these, which I've taken all of them, uh, some glutide, some magnetide, whatever name you want, terzimatide, and I actually take Reddit True Tide now, um, yep. which has been, that's I mean, I take true. several. I take NAD, uh, NAD plus a thousand milligrams. I do test Borland. Um, You know, I do the, the Wolverine stack, you know, which is the, BP uh, body protection um, compound BBC 157. I do TB 500. I do a lot. I'm even um, experimenting now with Folistan and uh, I think IGF one. Um, but mm-hmm. I study. You know, I read everything that I'm doing. Like I, when I went and see my, uh, you know, my doc, my nutritionist um, appointment, you seen that she said, "Oh wow, you lost 33 pounds and gained six pounds of lean muscle at the same time." So I'm different. You know, now other people, they get on it and they don't do cardio resistance training or they like, just because you don't have an appetite because it's stressed down the uh, receptor in your brain and says you're full, doesn't mean that you don't eat anything. It's just, you just eat better foods now. Like you're not starving. Mm-hmm. So, all right, what can I eat? You know, and that's why I think it just takes like, when they say your health is your wealth, like take some time to learn your health, learn your body. If the intermittent fasting, you see it and it's working. And I think if you regularly get like labs and checkups and these things done, you can see, okay, this is working. I'm deficient in this area. I need this area. But if you just really take, um, like you act like, all right, if you have a Bugatti, right. And, <laughs> you know, let's say your body is, a, I mean, Bugatti, but your engine is, you know, a 1966, whatever beat up thing. It's like, we can't see what's going on, but we all have these amazing bodies that we're blessed with um, that we just need to, really t- take inventory and do checkups and, you know, see what we're doing. So I think with me uh, and you, a lot of people, um, it's, it's some people that have good results with other people. And I think to the people prescribing, a lot of times the doctors, people just get into the business because the money side of it, like, all right, well, yeah. we can mark up. Uh-huh. It drives me insane. Cause you know, we have a, a business that's trying to do weight loss. Right. And again, I, the, looking at again my purpose in this in this world right my my why is you know my mom's part of it i don't want people to go through early demise and and health issues whether it's cognitive whether it's cardiovascular and or cancer for that matter and if you think about somebody the longer they're obese and overweight you see 10 20 percent in cancer you see you see a cardiovascular risk goes up 20 to 40%. You see stroke risk goes up. You see dementia risk almost double. If somebody becomes diabetic, they almost instantly double their dementia and Alzheimer's risk. And so- And it kept look, up 15 years, I, I read a stat. And 80% of chronic uh, diseases and illnesses come from, um, you know, being overweight and inflammation of the body. And like you said, all these things. So you're absolutely, you're right. Like, um, my bad, you, you know, girl, but you're, you're absolutely like, Right. So we have to lose weight. And even the Ozempics, those are started for people to have type two diabetes and have a BMI over 25, 30 percent. Like it wasn't for the, you know, the girl that wants to lose 10 pounds for this wedding. So she takes a high dose. Right. Of it. She's, she's skinny fat or, you know, what I mean, like. Right. So yeah. it wasn't like people are going to abuse things, but everybody's body works differently. And it's not just. Somebody now, some people have uh, ill effects. They take it, and it may have an allergic reaction, but it ain't killing nobody. Like, you know, unless you do a ridiculous dose and certain things like that. But if you monitor, and I think really you just all right as you're getting these things, I ask questions, and then it's so many other things, other peptides out there besides just 
you know, the famous ones that we know about now. Like, it's so yeah. many other amazing ones that, you, I mean, you know, you know, mm -hmm. just don't know about because they haven't taken the time. Well, but I got a patient, uh, I mean, again, high level manages a, a decent, decent chunk of, of funds for people and a lot, of money. a lot of stress on it. Right. And he's like, man, I don't like my testosterone is like 200. My doc's telling me it's low. He's like, he's on the fence whether to do something. But like, look, testosterone is one of the things where like it's a growth hormone. So it helps protect tissue. It helps to tell the signal to be alive and repair and replace, right? So obviously too much can be bad, but too little is also bad. Like you want it, there's a sweet spot. But his thing's like, okay, well, my doc just wants to do the injection. Like, hey, here's the thing with that. You're, you're not, what if your body can still make it? And this is the kind of going on in the peptide world. The peptide world is banking that, hey, look, if your testes or your body can still make it, that to me is the way forward. And people, and again, this is where people lose the, the guidance physiology textbook. I swear when they become doctors, they forget basic physiology and hormones and endocrinology and all these loops. And it drives me insane because it's like, what if we can take away the things or offset the things that cause the, the decrease or the suppression of your body's ability to produce it? Mm. And so, hey, look, we know cortisol and stress helps suppress that loop. And he went through a very stressful period a couple of years ago. And that's when you saw the labs tank. So I'm like, look, hear me out. Let's try a peptide approach. Meet with our provider. I think this is, again, it's the other approach to do the, <laughs> testosterone injections is still there it's not going anywhere if you want to do that it's not going anywhere but this peptide mechanism is trying to fix the loop up here that tells the boys down there to do their job and make you testosterone so three weeks in his testosterone has gone from 200 to 555 with his free to and again the beautiful part about it is he can come off that the clomiphene the kiss peptin the peptide that's helping kind of reset that loop Again, now we still have to look at how stress and estrogen kind of has this suppression over to kind of slow it down. But hey, that's still a better solution than just like being dependent on exogenous or outside testosterone for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And the more you take this, the more you make it harder for your, your factory to make what you're wanting it to make. And you're more dependent on the outside version. So that's the beautiful part about peptides is that it's like supportive and nudging versus like complete coming in and overhauling the factory and saying, get out. Like the peptides are like, Hey, look, we just want to tell the factory how to do this better without causing it to be shut down. Yeah. And I think too, sometimes like, to be honest, man, I think sometimes people need, people are lazy, man. Like not everybody really? on this journey. And sometimes people just need to just take it. Your testosterone is $200. I mean, 200, <laughs> 200. And you know, what's great was between 800 to a thousand. And Take it. You know what I'm saying? Just take the, you know, because your body, the more your body's even optimized hormonally, the better the other peptides is going to work. So the better, um, you know, all the other things that you're taking, you know, if you're taking, because some people get on Ozempics and Renatrutides and it's like, I was on this for nine months and it's not working. I, my dose has never happened where well, your testosterone is, is, is 150. Your testosterone is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So you got to optimize your body hormonally. And like me, I, I I did like when I first started. Let me just tell you what I did because I was two seventy five, two eighty. Um, you know my arm. Where are you, where are you right now? I'm like two thirty five, two thirty three. I haven't even really. I may be less than that. Um, but I lean muscle wise. Like I, I focus on. It's not just a fat loss, but building lean muscle and um getting stronger every day. Like I work out six days a week, six seven days a week, every day. I'm doing between now even eight to 10 miles, you know, a day now, like from walking uh, uphill, you know what I'm saying? To running, to sprinting, doing all this. I'm grounding every single day. I'm in the sunlight um, 30 minutes a day. I do breath work daily. I take cold hours. Like I'm extreme. I got my peptides right here. I got my, um, um, I'm doing creatine as well. Um, I'm doing um, my sea mosses. Um, I, I'm a, machine like i put amazing fuel in my body you know and i do testosterone like i i i'm doing the peptides but i also initially i was saying when i initially started doing the um um the testosterone and that's what gave me the energy personally to even mm -hmm. want to start doing other things like that so it's always like 
I do believe doing a nudge and things like that and 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 creating that. But sometimes people just, hey man, you know. Hey, but here's the case of if a month goes by and that nudge didn't work, then the other's there. And that's how we approach right. it again. Right. It, it, it's more so the mindset of the like how you get there is up to you now. Yeah. But knowing the importance of having these protective things going and working in your favor as you age is going to help the aging process. Yeah. Um, and again, there's a reason why 20 year olds don't get dementia and, and these different things. Cause again, like the hormones have an influence on protecting a lot of things as well as other aspects to it. Um, if you picture, you know, again, I want to be respectful of your time, oh. I don't know what, but you know, again, I just, I think, Kind of, again, this was probably 20 minutes ago when we were talking and we were talking about, you know, going to the doctor and da, 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 da. Like, it's kind of one of those things though, right? As a provider, I don't want to be the fat doctor. Mm. Right? And, I, and this is this thought process is like, you know, how many doctors and providers are not the stereotypical piece of health, but are giving health advice yet they're not even like you know what i mean like do you lift weights do you walk do you exercise do you eat healthy no you're not i saw like i smell mcdonald's in your office and you're telling me like to get my health in order mm -hmm. and again yeah like how often do you see that especially in your your field like i don't i'm only going to people who look like who look like that you know so i have dr warford out of houston texas um who is a doc i've known for 10 years in love. He's out of Detroit, Michigan, and things like that. Um, so I go see uh I see her. Um and I you know, I see you, I talk to you, and you say, Rob, you need these levels, you need this to look like this way, send me your labs, go get your labs done, um, uh, um, and things like that. And then from there, I I'm studying it. You know, I I watch a lot of Jay Campbell, I watch a lot of the um Gay Brecca, you know. So I'm doing every day, I would say at least 25% of my day is learning something about health, uh, health, learning something new, um, figuring something out, checking something out, but running. And I do all this by running, jogging, um, you know, working on my body um, daily. So I know even if something, all right, you know, is not the best now, I have enough. I'm aligned with a lot of great people who will check me and you know, try this or what about this? Or I had this reaction. I can ask about it, you know, but I'm only going to people who, who look like what they talked, you know, who are, who look like what they tell me to do, for sure. Well, and again, I just say that because, like, you know, I, I, I just, you see it all the time and you just sit there and you're like, what if that doctor was healthy and, and actually, because I think, like, maybe you know, do people miss getting better? Because, again, like, they're getting advice from somebody that's not really credible in terms of what they're being told. And it's just a mismatch. Like I, I think how many people, maybe if they believed in what their doctor was saying, because they were, Hey man, I, this guy, I want to look like him. Right. I'm listen to whatever he says. Like it's the gospel. Right. right? When he's, you know, 70 pounds overweight and huffing and puffing, just walking from one medical room to the next, like how likely you're going to basically take what he recommends to change your health. It's like, or are you going to be like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll exercise. No, just give me the med. Like, you know what I mean? Cause I, I think there's a credibility issue across healthcare. Um, oh. And and I think it's other, along with that too, the most expensive thing you pay for is what you don't know. So a yeah. lot of people don't have the information. Like a lot of people haven't how, like, don't just look at a study or don't look at a YouTube video or a TikTok video. How about you really go in and really research and really do your own research for yourself and see you know, and make that judgment based on, like you were saying, come back into you. All right, this makes sense. I'm going to try it or not. But like, how many people are taking the time to to really do that? Well, and this is the thing. Right? We, you know, there's somebody in the past who like, oh, I, I took this course. And, and again, I'm like, oh, cool. So it's outdated about, about 20 years at least. It's going off data from like late 90s, early 2000s. It's telling you to eat complex carbohydrates right. to your type 2 diabetes. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, look, like fiber is important, but the problem is like you've abused that system to the point where even fiber is not your friend or it's not going to help your blood sugar spike. So you've lost that window here. Well, no, no, I, I, this makes no sense. I got a certification in this course. I'm like, that's fine, but let's use 
this, your labs or the person you're, you know, you're working with, use your labs, implement, put a diet in place. And what one messes, you know, helps your blood sugar the best, or get a glucose monitor, wear it on your arm, watch mm. your phone and which one jacks your sugars up the worst mm. and, and call me back. But guess what? Your seed oils tend to be a usual cul culprit. Mm. I, and again, I'm like, use that as evidence, what your body wants and what it should not want to be near and yeah. build your diet based off using a CGM and watching your glucose responses. Yeah. Again, got the two to $400 to do a month worth of study. That to me, I love it because it gives you a real time reaction and you're like, Ooh, holy, no wonder I'm crashing and feeling like crap. My blood sugar did this and then it's tanking. Guess what's yeah. coming with that insulin ooh, and then you're tanking. And that's one of those things where it's like, the yep. proof's in the pudding. And I've done that with a couple like uh, athletes I've worked with. They're like, look, I'm trying to push myself and I'm being told to do this. I'm like, and you feel like crap. So, you know, hey, you have the money. Go go buy a CGM. Let's monitor your glucose. When you train, just What's start a uh, continuous glucose monitor. So like diabetics wear them to track their glucose and insulin. How much are they typically? Um, Usually about two to $400. It just depends like how like if you, you know, the longer you pay for the app subscription, the cheaper it is. Usually you replace like the, the monitor every month. And I think that's 200. And then the app is another fee. So okay. again, I, even people that have food sensitivities, like you can see blood sugar spike based off even immune reactions. So I don't like, sometimes like, look, I think, you know, we could run money to do a food sensitivity test, but the proof, like, let's see how your body responds to the various foods you put in. And, and we'll put in a game plan that makes sense for what we think is going on. We might tweak it, but we're going to have real-time information every day coming in about how you're responding to these foods. And then I want you to correlate it with how you mentally feel. Do you feel like, you know, Thanksgiving dinner crash? Do you feel mentally sharp? And let's start mapping what feeds you and makes you feel like the way you want and start making a list of the foods that make you feel a way that, the way you don't want to feel because those are probably not good for you. Again, we can correlate it back to usually blood sugar. Again, this thing consumes 25% of all your glucose, right? So mm. when, when you're not good at providing it or stabilizing it, usually you're going to be like deer in headlights, brain fog, mm. fatigue, blah. Yeah, I mean, even depression, like, like you said, like, yeah, there's going to be moments where people are depressed, but I think depression, the best way I like to communicate with it, like there can be 20, 50 causes of depression, right? Like if you get sick with a bug or a virus, do you feel blah? You feel a little down. Well, yeah, because your inflammation's up fighting an infection, right? And, and again, so we start looking what's happening to your neurochemistry, your hormones. It's not as easy for them to work, so you feel it. But the biggest thing is, is depression to me is the deviation away from where you know you can be. I think that's the biggest thing. If you know like, hey, I, I like to function here and I'm below that, that to me is depression. Now, what got you there is the thing that has to be figured out. Is it poor relationships, alcohol, is it poor diet? Is it inflammation? Is it head injuries? Like we don't, there, there's, there's tons of variables, but knowing that, Hey, I tried this and my depression's not solved. It's not over. There are so many causes. There's so many people out there that can actually really help you. And I think it's important. Um, going back to the question you asked, like, Hey, what could people do? Like that doesn't take money to kind of start building a better health and, and game plan. What do you think? Like, again, I'm always curious, like what's your, what is your morning routine? Like, do you, cause I think that's where it starts for a lot of people. Like if you just wake up, like, I, I really hope I get to the gym today. I hope it happens <laughs> to me. Like hope versus I'm going are two very different ways of like making things happen. If you hope something happens, I feel like you're destined for disappointment and failure versus like, I'm going to do this today. I'm going to the gym at one o'clock. It's on my schedule. It's happening. Yeah. It's, it's you, one, you said it right. That's routine, right? Like, so I switched to philosophy, uh, Matt, where it's, I get to go to the gym instead of I have to go. It's yeah. like, you know, so I'm grateful that I get to go. Um, and I travel a lot. So if I'm in a position where there's no gym around, I'm a walk, right? Walking is just as good. Like, you know, I ha always have, you know, my Apple Watch on, right? So I'm always um, tracking uh, my steps and I have a lot of friends that I compete with. So that's a help because I'm competitive and I get to see, all right, I'm going to at least do 10 to 15,000 steps a day, you know, 
regardless, it doesn't matter what's going on. I need to get some movement around. Um, Cause they said, they say it was something I just posted sitting is the new smoking, right? Yeah. That, that was research from probably 2008 uh, UT Southwestern. I think it was actually here at Dallas where they were doing research, looking at the, you know, if you sit for eight hours a day, like it's it, the stagnancy that it creates in your vascular system is almost the equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes. Wow. Wow. And, and, and that's just like, what do we do? We typically, you know, we eat, we sit, we're in our, phone scrolling you know we're doing those things like that so like for me it's you can scroll and be on the treadmill and an hour go by and you're like oh shoot you know even if you have it on three three five you know i try to do an incline of at least 12 to 15 um and this walk but every single day it's like i have a goal i have a goal a picture in my mind what i need to be and my why is my son you know driving is being here so it's like every day that i don't do something health related is me saying I don't love my son. This is me person, you know. So I'm yeah. so I put things in there. It's like, all right, well, wh am I going to eat today? Yes. Yeah, so if I'm going to eat today, I have to do some kind of, you know, I got to keep my body moving, things like that. So that's number one. When I start, when I wake up, first thing I'm doing is I'm meditating. All right, I'm meditating and I'm doing breath work. Right. I watch a lot of um, different like breathing techniques and things like that. But that's so huge is doing the breath work and then. Um, I shower, but I'm a do a show. I, I'm used to taking like mild to cold showers because by the time I would get in the shower, being you know one or five, it all it be cold anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna take a mild shower. Then I'm a, the last two three minutes is gonna be cold, you know. Um, if I don't have a, a cold plunge, and then I'm you know if I'm doing a lot of calls or zooms, I'm walking. I'm doing this, you know. If I didn't think the signal would be bad, I would have did this walking, um, yeah. grounding. You know, I got my feet on grass. You know what I'm saying? I'm touching grass. I'm letting it, I'm sitting out there. I'm closing my eyes. I'm not scrolling for at least 10, 15 minutes. Um, I'm not tip, I don't have my phone. I put my phone away. And I just get out in nature, try to get some vitamin D and just like sit and let, you know, because there's so many benefits to that as well. So I do a lot of those spiritual uh, techniques as well. Then after that, I'm going, you know, work out like every I like if, if I'm not working out or doing something like that, I'm cooking, right? And I love cooking now. And I love my food better than all these restaurants I eat. So I'm gonna come and and make six eggs, you know, I'm gonna marinate some stuff. I'm gonna do uh some meat, some avocados, um, some raw Greek yogurt, a protein shake, something like that. But I gotta make sure I'm putting in the protein because I know that's super important. So even if I'm not that hungry. Um, I'm going to make sure that I eat something protein related and things like that. But my whole day, my whole day focus is set up. If I don't have my son at the, at the time, and I'm doing homeschool because I homeschool my son as well, um, is it's health, health, you homeschool. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's four years. Um, absolutely. That's why he's a genius. No, um, seriously though, like we, <laughs> this, is, this is our first year doing it. And we, we were already at a school that was kind of like a hybrid, but we're like, no, like, like you said earlier, and this is why I'm like, again, I think we connect well. It's like, there's no one that's going to care for your own kid as much as you. No. And again, I think, you know, this is a whole other discussion about like pulling moms and making them go to work and pulling them out of homes. Like, how has that affected health in, in our society? But yeah, the aspect of like, again, I know it's not an option for everybody, but if it is like, you pouring your heart to make sure your kids have the foundation to walk out there with is so critically important. Yeah. I mean, and then you just look at this, this is like college, right? One, I never believed, unless you have a profession in trade or something where you really, really need it. Like, you know, I want my doctor to go to college and lawyer and things like that. But business wise, I've always felt like that's something you got to learn. You learn by trial and error. So for me, schooling is, is the things they teach are, a lot of things you need, like you didn't not teach my, you didn't teach me nothing about credit, you know, and that was huge. You let me yeah. go into debt, <laughs> and I yeah. can't get student debt off, you know, not to do some things now, but you can let me borrow a hundred thousand. But if I need a business, you won't let me get my business ten thousand. That's my credit. So my son is usually around me. Like you see, he's around, he's in my meetings, uh, he's around me. And then it's it's when my father died, right? You know, um, I had a love coach, right, and. I was just fresh off a divorce. Uh, I don't think my divorce was settled yet, but um, I did three things. I had a therapist, I had a love coach, and then I did marriage counseling on my own, right? And therapy was really great because I had to heal. I said, I'm not going to go into another relationship, not 
peel, right? That's unfair. And then you learn, oh, it's all these things from childhood and all these things, you know, you know, like my therapist, one of the things she said was I didn't have empathy for women. And I was like, oh, shoot. And I had some things that happened in life uh, with certain women in my life. And I never, where I didn't feel love. I didn't think women, I didn't think women really cared about me, you know? So I had to go and heal um, all these things. And anyway, I healed it. And I love, and my, it went up and now I'm good now, but um, my love coach, you know, was amazing because if you don't know how to love properly, like most of you haven't been loved properly either, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's hard to give something when you never even got it in the first place, right? So she, she was talking about, you know, I learned best with soft love, right? Like not tough love, like don't, I'm an Aries, you know? And people can believe and not believe things like that, but I'm a fire sign. So you're not going to make me do anything. You're not going to tell me, do anything, you know what I'm saying? But you can, it's a way, you can get me to do anything if it's loving, you know what I'm saying? If it's very feminine, if it's very um, nurturing. And one thing she said when my father died, this is really getting back to why I have my son with me everywhere, is she said, I want, um, with your dad, I want you to think three things that your dad did, because I called her when my dad died, that you love, right? And you're grateful for. Now I want you to think about three things that you wish your dad gave you, that you never got and give it to your son. Right. And for me, um, it was it was time. Right. It was never any gifts. It was never even things like that. I wish I like I knew my dad. I wish we had videos, footage. You know, I wish my dad hugged me. I wish we had like uh, my dad was amazing, could have four long talks with my friends. But with me, like it was always like uh, it was kind of awkward. You know what I'm saying? Even like hugs, and things like that. So I made sure my son, he's very affectionate. He's very loving. And uh, I think kids spell love, T-I-M-E, right? So mm-hmm. me, my son is everywhere with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get to see, monitor uh, why he's doing this, why this happened. And then, like, the first seven years, you're speaking to a kid's subconscious, right? So all the information going into your kid's ears, the first seven years is going straight to what's going to, how he's going to operate. So why wouldn't you be as protective as that as, as you can? Like, all he's going to hear is you're loved. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're great. You're amazing. You could do anything. You know how smart you are, you know how handsome you are? Like, all he's had is positive affirmation and love for seven years for me and his mother. You know what I'm saying? Because we co parent yeah. But that's all he knows. Like, all he knows is, oh, yeah, you're a beast. You know what I'm saying? You can do anything. And when he's at my meetings, he, he'll be there. He'll be, um, he'll be, he'll be quiet. And I'm like, man, he's so, I love how he is. He'll shake your hand and look in your eye. Like, I can monitor all these things. So like now as he goes to the world, it's certain things that happens he's not going to even have because he's it, it don't make sense. You know, <laughs> you know, and it makes it hard a little bit harder because you know people think just because a kid is homeschooled that we well, they need social skills. I'm like, do you know who I am? You know what I'm saying? Do you know like, like, yeah. he around people his, his social skills I guarantee are better than 90% of the other people because he's a big I make sure he's a beast. He's around people and we do activities all the time. But I say all to say that, you know, homeschool, when you look at, um, you know, just like people that are even celebrities and great, like they have private tutors. They have, we do cooking classes. We do, I put them in all kinds of sports and things like that, but I can watch and I can spend that time because when you, let's say your kid goes to school, Matt, from nine, you know, or eight in the morning, then he's home by five thirty, six or whatever time. And then, how many times is like he has to eat? Then he's going to bed at what eight o'clock? Like early, so you get two hours. What about homework? Right? Like, like and I don't even believe in doing homework. Like that's why you won't give me. Like let him get that should be done at, at at school. You know what I'm saying? That's not my responsibility. That's work is for school. School work, not no home. Like he's he need to be here with me because now he can't even get no time with me spending. So I was like, oh hell no! Like no, I I we not doing that. You know what I'm saying? We'll do an hour or two. We'll do the visual learning. We do all that stuff like that, but like, no, like I was, I, I'm, I'm so grateful. I probably got forty thousand pictures and videos on my phone of my son. So all this is recorded. He can see this. He can have this. And the time I spend a lot of time, um, I'm very present, but I spend a lot of time with my son. So he doesn't, he doesn't miss anything. So I think that, and I think that's that's so important. Like, and again, for us making the decision to homeschool was the same thing. Like. Well, so many, I remember their stat, like by the time they're 18 and let's say they leave the house, like that's 90 to 95% of the time you'll ever see your kid is before 18. Exactly. Which to me, I'm like, 
why, you know, if, if I don't have to give that time up and I'm not, again, I feel, you know, if you can't do it, I get it, but, and it's not to make you feel bad about not doing it. But for me, if I can, if I can have that time, same thing, I lost both of my parents. I wish I had more time with them. Mm -hmm. And again, it's like, if I can do something and again, it may not, it might be a little a learning curve at first, but if my wife and I can do this and again, do I want to go over math and do grading no but like at the same point i'm like but sitting down and teaching her and seeing the light bulb go off i'm like that is is just so rewarding on such a level yeah and helping connect dots and seeing that light bulb go off and then again i, I think it's easy for people like oh the social they're not going to be socialized i'm like that is i feel like a lot of times your answer for you to feel good about not considering Thank it Thank and I, again, and I'm like, look, and I, I don't like people projecting. And it's like, look, just keep that to yourself. Right. And again, I'm not saying you have to do it, but I want to try it for right. this reason. And again, and we have the flexibility where my wife can do it and I can help out in the subjects where you know, I, I like science and math. And that's more my wife is like, you do those ones. I'm happy to give those ones up to you. And it works. And I think it's it's a beautiful thing. Because again, it's time and experiences, whether it's early in the morning, whether it's at the end of the day, I get to kind of go over these things. And then too, like, I also make sure that they understand it before they move on to layer it in. And, and again, it's, it's funny because I think I was the first one in my family to go to university or college. I can't, everybody calls college university. It's kind of different. Um, and so... <laughs> I was like, oh man, no one's gone to really university. Like my dad went to college, but college and like college is like I think a three year or university is like your degree, your honors, your your bachelor's. Uh, college was usually more viewed as like a certificate. And in, in my head, I'm like, oh, I need to go to university. Like I, which again, like I knew I want to be a doctor of, of some type. So I'm like, I, I need to do it. But there's also this part where I was like, even if I didn't, I'm like, I'm still going to university because I need to. I need to just show like I, I went off to university. But then the more and more you kind of gain respect for people who are good entrepreneurs, successful, <laughs> you realize most of the education they got to be successful was not in the university. It was away from it. It was on the streets. It was listening. It was psychology of understanding how to have good relationships. Stuff that, hey, yeah, you can go do a business course at a community college. That's probably enough to give you a foundation. Then the rest is just sweat equity. Right. And then, <laughs> and even like, look at a master's. Like, look at, you're all, you know, most people are being taught the same thing. And obviously, that's not working. Because how many people now even use, it was a stat I seen on Walt that said 86% of people, I don't know where to get these numbers at, feel like going to college was a waste of time. And the main thing and that's why I even wrote the book, Connecting a Rich. I've always known it's about relationships, right? It's never been about, you know, you having the most degrees or things like that. It's about you being able to get in the right room, the right people, build value. And if the right person likes you, right? Mm -hmm. All it takes is one connection to change your life, right? Yep. One, right? So if I can make the right person like me and gain favor and add value and learn how to serve my way to greatness, that's going to get me there faster than any, any, somebody making a call can get me the same thing it took somebody 10 years to get, right? So it's all about, you know, relationships, right? And building that and nurturing those relationships. And then this, like you said, um, even with the people that, you know, trying to make you feel a certain way, if you are homeschooling your kids like that, just like my son ain't never been bullied. You know what I'm saying? Like he ain't, he doesn't like the, the habits that sometimes you get from kids, even these, these private schools, like how many people growing up do you see that successful that said they had a teacher that growing up said they couldn't do something, right? And you see some of them that say, you know, a lot, some of them that say, hey, I did this, now I became this. But think about how many people had guidance counselor, people say, hey, you can't do this, you can't, and just listen, right? So it's like, my, my, you know, it's it's another layer because the the confidence and the belief and the values and core things it has in him is, in, is incredible. It's like, it's, it's a, it's a cheat code. Like it, all he hears is positive affirmations and he has goals written down and, and knows about credit and assets and liabilities. This is at eight. You know, we're cooking food daily. Like, if you look at my yeah. business, it's three. I went and got a private chef to teach him because I seen that he liked cooking. I, I saw him with the little, like, chef yeah, jacket. Yeah, chef coach. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, chef third. So, like, it's about when you when you spend time with your kids, you can really see, and then you can nurture, okay, he likes gaming, or he likes this, or he likes his sport, and you put him into it. And that's one of the reasons why you take care of your health to have better 
bring kind of this shit more energy. And then you figure out ways to all right, be creative, you know, and create a solution where, which is hopefully a business. Um, so you can't provide for your family because you look at AI now, look at a- AI in, in, in China and these other countries that they're on AI right now. You know what I'm saying? Like they're with the technology and things like that. And we're over here learning uh, geometry and trigonometry. What, what the hell are we going to do with that? You know what I'm saying? Like who's ever used, you know, that, that's like, it's, it's so much stuff that you go and you waste and you can't even think, you know, but even college is about networking. If you do go to college and university, it's about the relationships that you build there and the relationships that you build over time. That it all comes down to relationships to me at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, I had notes written down when we first started and I, <laughs> I've kept on moving over, but I, my, I had this one question I, I was going to ask you, okay. and again, this is kind of pulling into it and you hit on it, you know, people, people telling you like, Oh no, you just can't do that. Like them labeling li- limitations on your, your competency. I think to me is, it's just one of these things where as a parent, as if, if at the end of the day, my daughter knows there's nothing holding her back from anything she's wanting to do. Nothing like both of my daughters. If, if, if at the end of the day, if I can hang my hat and like I did the biggest and most important thing is that they know no boundaries. Like they set their boundaries of what they can accomplish, achieve and have in their life. So they can create anything again, but again, it, it might take hard work, but they can do it. I think that's the biggest thing. If I, if I can leave them with that feeling of like, you know, if it is to be, it's up to me kind of thing. Like I can do it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. yeah. Cause again, there's always going to be the negative, like, Oh, you don't want to do that. It's so hard. I, and then those, again, those people are so like, I, like, I don't think they even realize that they're doing it, but you hear yeah. it. And I hear this like coming in and I feel fortunate. I'm like, I feel like I have a good, strong foundation, but I push through it. But I'm like, that's my goal as a parent. I'm like, I need to instill that same like piss and vinegar in my kids that again, like they can do anything. It might take some like calluses to be formed on your hands, but you can do whatever you want. And there's nothing that can hold you back if you want something bad enough. Mm-hmm. That's that. Was, so my question was like, do you think limitations on people are, are self-imposed or from like external forces or both? I think it's both because growing up, depending on the parents, that you have, they say, I forget the stat, but we have, a, a, it's a ridiculous number of audio tapes in our head from our parents that yeah. we were growing up. And our parents are the ones that we trust the most because they had us initially. So if our parents are saying, you know, you can't do nothing, you ain't gonna be anything, be realistic, yelling at them, certain things like that, they're doing things because parents sometimes aren't the greatest and they're selfish and they, sometimes they're jealous of their kids as well. It's like, you know, that's just, you can still do it, but it's a lot more to overcome, right? And yeah. I think um, if we just took the time to really know and be intentional about what we're saying, being gentle, like even with a little with boys, with our sons, like saying, hey, not just be a man, don't cry, stuff like that. No, it's okay to share your feelings. It's okay. Get it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, get it out. But let's process this. Let's, or why do you feel like that, right? What happened? Like, you ask questions. So you're, you're, you're still... Um, correcting in a nurturing and loving way, but you still allow him to experience his emotions. So I think it's all about what you what you are putting in and then letting the kid watch. Cause sometimes yeah. there's got the kids on these on YouTube and stuff all day. You know what I'm saying? And they're watching, they're letting YouTube, you know, and, yeah, raise their kids and things like that. So that also can be um harm harmful way. Cause I mean there's certain things that my son is saying, start saying something and <laughs> you know, I'm like, all right, what are you watching? Right. Like and <laughs> Who are you hanging around? What are you watching? Who? What's this new influence? Because your behavior is like different. Exactly. The, that's positive. Yeah. So you just got to monitor. Uh, you have to monitor that. And I think um, at the end of the day, like your drive, what you're supposed to become, you're going to become. Because it's it's, self, it's resilience. It's certain things I think are innately in you um, mm-hmm. that we all have. Because there's no way with the experiences in you know that I've been through that I should have did <laughs> and had the things that I have. Because I didn't. You know, I never seen that. You know, I didn't. How do you go from wanting this? And we have, in, I think our house was 1,800, 1,500 square feet growing up that I was in for 20 years, right? And, um, you know, I left for college, but they were in that. But then I have bathrooms, you know, I had bathrooms and I had multiple houses since then that were 1,800 
square feet. My bedroom was 3,000 square feet in my last house, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I've been of cribs about your place, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and I'm not going that big. I, I don't know. I may do it. Um, but it's just like life is just, man, it's, it's you go through life and you learn. And the thing is, you just you just can't take it as serious, man. Like, you can't care, but not that much. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of things are out your, they'll happen to out your control. And it's not what happens, it's what you do about what happens. And I think that's the the one of the best teachers in life is that, all right, messed up things are going to happen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, no yeah. matter how good you are, what kind of person you are, stuff is going to happen that's out of your control, that's going to suck. People want to take advantage of you. People are going to hurt you. You're going to get your heart broke. Like, all these things are going to happen to you, you know. But, you know, it's how you react. And what do you do about that now? You know what I'm saying? You have to be resilient, be positive, listen to stuff daily. Just like what you're putting in your mouth, you need to watch, inspect what you're listening to. You know what I'm saying? What yeah. you see and what you listen to has to be the same thing. Who you're around. All that has to be positive. All that has to be good. And all that you have to be very intentional about. All right. So I know we've we've been going for a minute. We could do probably 20 of these and quite easily. Um, <laughs> but I, I want to kind of focus up on a few kind of exit kind of questions. Because I think, you know, we talked about, you know, what to put in your mouth in a general sense. Um, I think kind of like having a why, like what what should be the foundation of your philosophy? Like, because I think having a why is like, you know, what's your purpose? You know, your son, like being this role model and giving and, and kind of being like helping him have time, like having that why makes it easy for you to then make all these other decisions around your day. Like if, if something does not align with your why, then it's easy for you to say, Hey, no. And, and you're not stressed about having to say no. Cause I think, you know, for me, a lot of, for a while, I was like, you just want to say yes to everybody, but you're like, at the same point, it's exhausting. If you say yes to people that you're not supposed to say yes to, cause it doesn't align with you. It's not a nurturing. You know I mean, like, so it's okay to say no. And I think when you know your why, it's easy to know when you should say yes, when you should say no, protect your time, protect your thoughts, protect your, your feelings. Um, but like the next piece I think too, is like what you feed your mind is so critical. So on that sense, and, you know, I know, you know, I've seen, you know, little posts of you speaking to younger males and, and trying to be a positive voice in them. So what like do you have people that you listen to to be a positive voice in yourself every day? Like I got mine. Like I, do you know Les Brown? Absolutely. Yes. He grew up in the same neighborhood as me, Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. So I I love Les He's Brown. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to be in a master. Like I had you know see him speak a couple years ago, and again I just <laughs> told him he was going to be mentally like retarded, and again that his basically is one of the biggest speakers from stage. And again, mm -hmm. I story I love his sayings his things and again it's just there's there's so many like pieces of knowledge so to me like i have an hour drive some days to work i can turn on the radio and you hear like the chaos the politics the yeah. sport all that crap means nothing i'm like i might listen to like hey you know who won the, the cowboys game or who won this turn it off and then i put less brown on or i have like my go-to people to to again like Make sure my brain is being fed good, nurturing kind of feedback. Who you know? Who are yours? I like um, I did. I've been in person development so long, so I shuffle right. Like Jim Rohn was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I like um, um, I like uh, David Goggins. Um, yeah. I like um, Eric Thomas, uh, ET Hip Hop Preacher. I like um, um, I know um Eric. Eric um, Thomas. He always has the hat on, right? Yeah. Yeah, yep. Et, I like um, uh, I, I like a lot of spiritual teachings too. I like uh, Wayne Dyer. I like uh, Rest in Peace. I like uh, Jerry Esther Hicks. I like a lot of you know attraction manifestation um, type ones. I like uh, Stephen Covey, The Seven uh, Successful Habits. Um, and I really like the um, what's the guy? The it's a couple. Like now, it's like I'm more on like more marketing driven ones. What's the guy with the hat on? Who was a fitness player on the gyms? I post him uh, a lot. Um, uh, what's his name? Hundred million dollar, uh, hundred million dollar leads. Uh, hundred million. Um, I forget. Um, so him and I like um, a lot of like high vibrational. Like I, I research a lot of like this. This vibrations like frequencies and things like that. Um, I like um, the type stuff. 
like yeah, yeah um like so so phasio frequencies things like that like you know things over like 900 you know megahertz uh, you know it it sinks in the lines and things like that um um theta beats and things like that i listen to those going to bed i like um what else i watched the secret you know the secret it came out <laughs> i probably watched that a thousand times right like you know that the meta secret um a lot of uh, meta Meta, metaphysical teachings and things like that um i study um as well um because i believe 95 percent is spiritual five percent is uh is physical so i like a lot of teachers um from that let's learn different perspectives on on all of it like um but i like peaceful um peaceful things i like um it, it it's it's it'll come back to me but like right now it's I'm I'm listening to a lot of J. Campbell. It's really all peptide type guys. So yeah. I listen to a lot of Gary Brecker, a lot of J. Campbell. I like him, uh, Hunter Williams, uh, as far as peptides, because that's the business I'm in. I want to master it. And but yeah, so when you're talking about Drive Time University, when you're going somewhere and it's an hour drive, that's all that's Drive Time University. You you can take that time to learn and feed your feed your mind. Um and things like that, because I only I only can hear, see, speak positivity. You know, like I can hear certain things, but I don't let it in. You know, like it's like all right, even if somebody's being negative, it's like all right. You know, I understand. You can share, vent, let me know what's going on, but we can't stay there. You can't be a mayor of misery. So, so um, let me ask you this question: How how much do you watch? Harmozy, Harmozy is his name. Of last one. Harmozy, how how often do you watch the news and just turn on the Never. You, you don't let anybody television for you? No. No. <laughs> like I don't watch TV. I don't even watch TV. Like it's re- like I was at a, a sister's birthday yesterday and the game was on. And that's the first time I even like looked at a game this this uh this season because it's like it's great. They're all they're living their dreams and it's like, you know, with whether they win or lose, I'm not a sports better. I think I'll probably care more if I was probably making something off that, but it's like that is really good for, I'm happy for them, you know, like, great. I see their, you know, they have the lot and they're paid because they affect and a lot of people watch them, which is great, but I'm trying to leave my legacy now. So I've, I've really just been a lot more intentional. Um, I, for a long time, I've been like that. Ever since I got network marketing, I think I've, you know, 20 years ago, I've been like, no, it's only certain things, even shows. Like I got to really like a show. Like I love Game of Thrones, you know, yeah. uh, Breaking Bad, some things like that, like Billions. I like Billions because I, I I watch I watch certain things that kind of line <laughs> with what yeah. I don't know, but it's 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 rare that I'll do something. It's it's interesting because it's like as I get more protective of what like hits this this space, then my list of what I watch on TV, I'm like, why would I watch that now? Like it's just <laughs> to me, it's it's harder to be like. Uh, you know, out of boredom, like, yeah, I'm bored. You know what? Instead, it's like, I'll just go to bed early and wake up early and start creating earlier. Exactly. Versus staying up for two hours to watch something I really am not invested in. And same thing with sports. Like, you know, I grew up playing hockey, lacrosse, volleyball, and, and sports and all that. Not, I, I appreciate and I love them. I like the, honestly, I like what it does from a growth standpoint for the athlete. But, you know, to me to get so upset about an outcome that I can't control and like, you start yeah. kind of like this is kind of stupid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, I'm not gonna want to say it. You know, they're gonna get mad at me not play. But no, you, 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 right? It, it's, it's. I mean, when you think about it, man, you think people like they want more. It's money, better health. They want these things, but the thing is, like, it's not going to just happen. Like, it's not just going to fall out of the sky, man. And for me, it's like, what if you took that last hour in the first part of your day to focus on? Go in your imagination, visualize, and see yourself living it. Like people don't even, if you could take 15 minutes out of your day and just visualize and, and put yourself in a state, right? Um, I love Tony Robbins too. Tony Robbins said, uh, when two people meet, whoever has most, uh, whoever in the rapport is there, whoever has more influence, will, I mean, whoever has more um, influence will guarantee like that sale. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so when you, when you, or meeting somebody, like, did, how much time did you take and visualize that, all right, I'm about to speak now. This many people are going to see it and affect it, or I'm going to or be affected by this. Like, this is going to go viral in a, in a positive way, or, you know, mm-hmm. like, 
I'm going to do this. And, you know, I have all kind of affirmation, incantation, incantation. I speak. Money comes easy and free, frequently, whether I'm working, sleeping, or playing. Money flows freely to me, you know, in avalanches of abundance. Like, I'm always speaking these things into existence. Like, I always, because I believe, you know, abracadabra uh, means um, you speak what you create. So I believe your words are powerful. I believe your word is your wand. And you can create things just based off you speaking it with conviction and believing it. And I believe once you, you know, it, it doesn't have to, just because it does something on external doesn't really show what it is doesn't mean it's not real like I go inside my imagination and I see it like when I was before I got that house I was getting evicted out of a house that I was renting right that was 2,000 square feet and but I wrote down I I'm going to have this many bedrooms I'm at this closet my driver's going to be like this lines were going to come out of a person's mouth uh, out of water's going to come from the lion's mouth I'm going to have garages for every car his and her closets everywhere, theaters. How does that happen in less than a year and a, a year and a half later? You put it out there and you started going towards it. Thank you. I wrote it. I wrote the vision and they said you're 30% more uh, likely to, to attract what you want. Just writing it down, not just texting it, but taking, letting your muscles move and actually writing it down. But I would see the vision and even like you got to get past this, this, your environment may not be what you want it to be. But you got to start falling in love and getting excited and believing that it's already done. You got to believe, like belief is more important than ability. Belief, yeah. you know, belief, imagination, seeing, I started speaking when my health was terrible. I'm in the best shape of my life, man. Mentally, physically, physically spiritually, emotionally, financially, I'm in the best shape of my life. Every day I speak. Every day, then I get somebody that comes and I meet you, I meet this, and it just comes to me because I speak it, but it's not like how many different people think you get luck? I'm lucky. No, luck is laboring under correct knowledge. That's what luck is. You create your luck, right? You yep. create what you believe and what you believe you're worthy of. So the more I love myself, I work on my health, the more confidence I get. I know that I'm worthy of it. I believe I'm worthy. And just for me, I don't need to do this to impress this person or impress this girl. I'm worthy because I know who I am. You know what I'm saying? And I know how special I am and how great I am. And I tell myself, every single day. So outside opinions don't even affect how I feel about myself. And it takes a lot, a lot of time, a lot of practice to get to that point. But once you get there and you believe, you really believe, my mom would say, when you believe you receive, when you doubt you go without, right? My mom would always say, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You know what I'm saying? You can do all things, you know, all I, all I heard is I can always do it. Oh, Rob won't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like Rob won't be a billionaire. She's absolutely right. Cause I am. You know, mm -hmm. I am. It's already done. So I walk it, talk it, act like it, move like it, put myself in those. I watch it. Um, I study it, you know, and, you know, now it's just letting other people see the manifestation. But to me, it's all it's always been done. Dude, man, I love it. I mean, I could sit here. We could just keep <laughs> for, for hours. Because, again, it's like there's a good energy like exchange, right? It's I not know. I know. It's lift, it lifts you up like I'm, I'm ready to go sit there and. Either go work out, go like do something awesome with the kids that's high energy. Because again, like being around, and I think again, this is like being around people that you want the energy. Like again, obviously you have to bring a similar energy or else you suck the energy out of the relationship. But I think that's one of the things too. Like, you know, as a provider, seeing people in relationships or in, in an environment that the energy is. They they want to be here, but they're allowing the energy around them to be down here. And I'm like, that's half your problem. Mm -hmm. Like you're you're allowing to people to say no and give you limits. So that's pulling you back. You're you're allowing this person or this doctor to say, oh no, you can't do this without this med. Or I'm like, and you see that, and I think that's the hardest part as a provider to basically rehab the kind of the spirit, the energy, the faith, the mindset aspect. And that's, that's honestly why this podcast was part of our mission was like getting people like you, even though it's like health, wealth, and the ultimate self, we put the ultimate self part is, is really there for the other aspect that's intangible outside of health. And that's really mindset. And like, what do really successful people have from a mindset standpoint? And I think that's, you know, Kai, you're the first guest we've had that are, has been like really, really mindset and heavy driven on that. Obviously, you have the health piece too, but I think the mindset is 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 huge. Yeah, it's it's 
it's everything. You have to go there in the mind first before the body goes there, right? Huh. And and once you learn that it's ninety five percent spiritual, and it's only five percent physical, right? Like it's it's that's more. You 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 can do less and accomplish more. You don't have to work hard. You know you have to work smart. You know what I'm saying? Like work smarter, not harder. Like it's the example where the guy you want to spend eight hours cutting down the tree, or you want to spend seven hours cutting, you know, sharpening your axe in an hour cutting down the tree. I've always believed in, I'll I'll spend seven hours sharpening the axe, right? Like yeah. or I'll actually I'll pay this person, or I'll get an agreement where he sharpens the axe and this person cuts it down, and this give me my spot percentage, right? Like so, yeah. I I, I, like, I like I'm always trying to do leverage that way and, and use connections, affiliates, partnerships, because we can all win together, right? And we can all, I don't have to have the product or the service, you know, you can have it. But I say, hey, Matt, I have this client, so I have this network. What if we did this? We combine, you know, I have this, you have that. Want me to do this together and see what we can do. And that's how, you know, you could, you do a lot. Do <laughs> you know? Like that's how, that's how we do it. And that's why, like, when you asked me, um, it was nothing to say, you know, absolutely. I'll jump on this. I'm glad. I, I feel like I've been so f full because not a lot of people know this about me. Like, if you get on my social media and to see, you may just see lifestyle things sometimes. Like, because um, in healthcare, you really don't need to recruit people like that, per se. Like, you really just, you know, see the fruits. And when people see these fruits, I mean, they can think a lot of different ways. Some people think I'm a rapper, athlete, <laughs> something like that. But it's like, no, I actually have a lot more to give. And I think if people understood me um, more or got to know who I, I was as a person, um, it will it would do good. And, and not only would I think it would motivate other people, but they get to see like, man, I can do that too. Because Rob is, you know, it, it, he's no different than me. You know, he's he, he can be a little more disciplined in these areas and other areas where I'm not. But we all have the same 24 hours. We all, um, you know, really have to, you know, whatever opportunities that we want, that we, you know, and, and I really believe that whatever you focus on expands and you focus on serving and giving more, uh, you'll be blessed more. And that's what I know I need to do. Like I, I didn't have, I didn't accomplish to do all these things just to be low key and be, you know, you know, let me just play it down and just be, you know, I don't want to really shake no feathers, but I, no, like I need to, let me do that. Let me go. On. You know, you ask. Yes. You know, I got a call from Chase. One executives wanted me to speak to that. I'm like, yes, I'm going to put myself out there because I need to serve more people while I'm here. I, I owe that to my parents. I owe that to, you know, God, society and, and I owe that to my son. So let me be a positive aspect as much as I can. So I thank you for uh, the opportunity uh, of doing this, even though my, I, I'm trying to fix my lighting and, you know, all this stuff all the time. <laughs> but I honestly, who cares about the light? To be honest, like, the words you're speaking are way more powerful than the, mm. the perfect lighting in the background. Because I think if people can take away from this, I mean, the, the words you're saying, like there's gems in, in a lot of these sentences. And I think, again, you can tell you have a lot of, you know, you, you protect your mind, you put positive influences in just from the way you speak. And I think it's, it's great. And I think more people need to go towards and again it's funny because i look at how i kind of went through my 18 19 you know as i was kind of going through like oh science is everything like science explains everything and then you kind of like go through and you you kind of go through university and then you go and you get into like uh, your professional school and and you start kind of going through and science can only explain so much and faith has to be this other part and i think you know, for so many in, in society, we've gotten so far away from having good faith. And I think we need to go back and have faith as like a foundation, it's like through and through, whether it's religion, whether it's spirituality, whether it's just faith and just doing the right thing and moral like faith. Like there's so many ways we can look at it. Religion's like an off-putting thing. Start somewhere else and, and just have faith in something bigger than yourself. But I think it's, you know, for me, I, it was a slap in the face when I got into cadaver lab and you start kind of working on a cadaver and you're like, you know, you thought it was, again, I'm like, God, I don't think this is going to be weird. Like dissecting a human body for eight months. Mm. And then you sit there and like, it was just, there's no spirit there. There's something like, it's just the empty vessel. That to me was like this moment. I'm like, there's something much beyond you know biochemistry and biology like in science like there's a spiritual aspect that yes this is a body but the person the thing that made this body mm. 
was that spirit and that's gone it's vacant and it was just like you know a physical again it was it made it easier to to go through and then as you dissect you're like moment after moment the perfection of the architecture of your body you're like i'm sorry that the fact that this was done by chance to me does not seem realistic anymore there is some bigger energy and power that orchestrated every little thing on this earth and how we feel and how we interact and how the energy aspect the the intelligence within us like the, again there's something bigger than science can explain and i think this is where faith needs to kind of come back in and be like hey look i was here this entire time you guys took a break and that's how i'm kind of going through my life is like look you know I, I went through this kind of science can explain everything to holy crap it does not explain mm. the majority of things and faith needs to kind of come back into mm. my life and be more the guide of it and i think it's interesting because that's where like to me it's like i think as we step back and look i feel like it, faith has kind of disappeared across the board for a lot of people and i think that's one of the reasons where it's like man you know we need voices that give us faith and, and again and you know, whether you call it darkness and light or faith or fear, like, you know, again, it's always this battle. And if you got more darkness or more fear versus fear and or versus faith and light, I think it's really easy to get in a bad spot. So I think it's one of those things where, you know, the positive factors, whether it's faith, whether it's positivity, whether it's voice, those things we need more of. So you provide a huge amount of that just in a little short couple of months I've known you. It's been, uh, again, I love watching again. I'm not a huge fan of like sitting on social media, but your posts, I always sit there. I'm like, again, your son doing something cool with his dad. Again, you walking, showing me, you know, the streets of Miami or something. Again, it's just, the, it's not some negative mm -hmm. piece. And again, I, I think that's you, you practice what you preach. So I, I respect you for that. And then again, I respect the, the friendship. So. Likewise, likewise, my friend. I'm glad you have me. I feel like, you know, I, I poured a little bit of my, you know, I've been drinking this water, but I was able to pour <laughs> so I was in me uh, into another cup. And I feel like now that my cup is a little more, I can take more in now. So I think it's, it's good that we give, we share as much as we can, because now as I give more, I open myself to expand and receive that much more. So I think, you know, even with your wisdom, uh, and what you're doing uh, for people and you're really giving people the time and the trust again and that space. I love what you're doing um, as well. And I think, you know, anybody watching, definitely if you're in Dallas, uh, definitely make sure you check out um, his institute, everything they're doing. And um, yeah, you know, for me, I'm, I'm between Texas, Miami, um, Florida, Detroit and Ohio often. Um, and like I said, I have a, a peptide company that has everything that you can imagine, um, you know, that you need, that your body needs, things like that. So anywhere I can be of a service, we can network. Yeah. Around, you know, as Rob Coates, um, I know Matt, you're going to say so. Well, and then, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll make sure we send you the link. And, and so anybody, you know, we can kind of share, uh, peptide, uh, again maybe you can shoot me a text and i'll link it into like the youtube part and then the show notes so when people click on the podcast we can link the peptide link in the show notes i think too you know your book your amazon book I, again you can find on amazon you said barnes and nobles yeah i think pick what you want from this i think there's a lot of good information yeah also, a lot <laughs> <laughs> you know, even if you got hey shit, we got off the podcast there's five books i think everybody should read right here's the list like i'll put it in the show notes like again I'm, I'm here to help people kind of enrich their lives in, in ways that not necessarily always conventional ways i think it's if it's but ways where i think are the best across the board to really enrich your lives for a long period of time um I, i'm trying to think uh all right, so number one thing, just to summarize, you said love yourself has to be number one. Yeah. Health was the number two. Yeah. You got a number three? Um, I would say number three is, I'd say be happy along the journey. Like trying to find a way to have, um, you know, to enjoy the process more, not just the, the result. Um, because... Along this way, this journey, a lot of these things, a lot of the things you're going through, a lot of the hardcore, you know, the 
the the things that you experience along the journey or the things that you appreciate so much yeah. more. You know, it's hard to appreciate them now, but it's it's because you're in it. You know, when you got bills that's due tomorrow or two months, you know, and you and your health is like when you're in the part where you got to change, it's hard, you know, but it's also noticing that and the people that you're going to network and connect, every person you meet, I think is just a mirror of yourself. You know, every, I, they say meet God everywhere you are. So um, we can just learn to say, you know what, this is a teaching moment. This is this obstacle right now. Good. Like, all right, it's hard. Good. This is going to help me later. All these things, you know, you're going through challenges or, you know, you got to look at them as good. I'm going to beat it. I'm going to be great. I'm going to make it happen. This is a part of the process, but I'm going to learn a way to be happy because happiness is, you can't get that externally from another person, from a partner, a business partner, a spouse. That has to be something within. And I wish I knew, um, I wish I knew that, you know, just, uh, you know, that's happiness is really an inside job and it all comes down, down to you. You know, it comes down to you doing what you enjoy and things like that. So, I mean, not to be long winded, but. Um, no, I mean, I think you see, though, right, when people think happiness is out external, it's they're always chasing the next thing to make them happy. And when it's not there, they're unhappy. Right. It's like it's the next high, whether it's. <laughs> You know, hey, I made a viral video. Did that make you happy? It's like, okay, but what's the bigger picture behind that? Or, hey, I made a, I made a million dollars. Like, did that make you happy? But all right, but what happens when you are not making a million dollars the next month? Are you unhappy? Right. right. <laughs> I think if happiness is always tied to something that's like, yeah, you know, kind of not from within, then it's again, it's it's de you're destined to have short windows and and lots of void. And I think that to me is the part where, again, faith the why your true why really come into place so that your direction of where you really can kind of come back home and refocus when you need to is always there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so like, I mean, people appreciate, you got, that's why you got to listen to this podcast over because you'll preach a lot of things you're saying, I'm saying, and we're saying people will hear it, but they, it's rare that people like they're listening for something, but it's, they don't really listen because success leaves clues. And mm -hmm. it's a lot of clues in this that weren't like, hey, this is what you do. But I really still said, hey, this is what you do. You just have to, like, pay attention and really go back and hear and say, oh, this is what it meant. Because this is this was it. This is what I needed. Right. But it may take you a couple of times going back and listening to it again. But really, um, yeah, I would just say, you know, just hear it, um, listen to respond. I mean, even the thing with listening, that's a that's a, a million dollar gem right there because it's so much power in empathetic listening. I mean, get to the point where you can allow somebody to have, have their perspective, whether you agree with it or not, you can listen and mm -hmm. let them, just feel, and let them get everything out. Not to the point where, you know, people, you know, I just got to say, I got a question. I don't want to forget about it. Yeah. That's selfish. That's up. Like, if you know what you're going to say before I'm done talking, you're not listening. Yeah. You know, like, take the time to get good at listening. That's a million dollar gem, you know, your family, your kids, like what we said about that's a gem right there. Like these are all lessons in, in courses and books. You know, I probably read three, 4,000 books, like in seminars, like you're getting all the it, two hours. We've been talking for a while, but you get to get <laughs> condensed down, not even for a charge. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, you know, or, you know, but it's like, you're getting this for free. So you got to like respect it, appreciate it, take it in, take the lessons. Um, and then I say that the last two things I'll leave them with is a way to get, there's two ways to get whatever you want, right? From any person, two ways. I talk about my book. Um, and we want to build a relationship with anybody, high level, you know, person, um, anybody you want. Uh, the first way you do it, is you got to add value first, right? You got to add value first. And that seems simple, but no. Like most people come to you, me, successful people. Hey, can you mention me? Can you do this? They're always coming with a handout and you got to go with, all right, how can I add? How can I give, all right, a connection, a resource? Oh, I got your book. I read it. It's amazing. When you talk about this part, like, oh, your son is, Find ways, little secrets to all right, add value first. It doesn't always have to be monetarily, but 
number one, add value first. All right, how can I give? Like even with this, with me and Matt, how this builds our relationship because this was an ask of him. Hey, can you do my podcast? Right? Yes. All right. One, because it builds a relationship, right? And when I if I need something from Matt, how easy it is for me to ask Matt for something once I've done something for him? It's way easier, right? Yep. And people they they're afraid to ask because one, they don't know how to ask. Then two, they don't feel worthy because they don't have any relation. All right. So number one, add a value first. And then secondly, the second secret um, I do when I'm building any kind of relationship with any person um, is find a way to um, where, find out what their passion is and help them fulfill it. Right. Like I, I got a video on my YouTube of um, uh, value tame, the guy who's over value tame and he talks about how um, he had a very wealthy friend of his. Uh, his son was in jail. And he was like, you know, it's really broke up about it. And he went to go see his son. He went to go see his son. And he was like, wow, you did that? And he turned over his contacts. Hey, this is my Rolodex. Tell them I said I sent you. And off of that, he made $30 million off of one uh, connection. Right? What people miss is that, all right, to get you can get whatever you want from a person if you know how to give it to them. You know what I'm saying? If you know how to do it. And you got to make people the right people. Know, like, and trust you. Once you make a friend where somebody knows, likes, and trusts you, they'll give you different access to them that they wouldn't give a, a, another person. Yeah. That's how you do it. That's how you get access. Because you, you want people to believe and know that you're your friend. Because when you're my friend, what I would normally charge somebody for, I'm not going to do because you're my friend, mm -hmm. right? But people have to get out of the either the the mentality where it's all right. If I do this for you, you owe me this, or like just this take take take. No, in this society, when you come in adding value first, and then oh, what is I've been listening to this, or what what is the biggest problem that I just saw from Mac? What if I help him solve that, right? What if I help? What does he need? Like this. I said I had a, a cousin that um, just had a stroke and can't feel the right side of his body. So somebody needs to come in and say, hey, I got this. If he tried this, I had an example where somebody was doing this and it worked and, and it helps my cut. Like, what does that do? You know, you know, what does that do? How does that increase, you know, short our, our time, even though we've only known each other a short period of time, how do I feel about this person because how this person made me feel? Because they came to me giving value. Right. So if they just took this little gym right there, I've made millions, millions and millions and millions of dollars just by knowing this secret. Knowing this one trick right here, you know, right here. It's been this uh, this secret alone would help you if you don't have if you don't have peptides, you don't have money. For, this helps you get everything you want without money doing this. It's uh, that same principle. Somebody like, again, a big thing is like for me is like add give something of value and ask nothing in return. Just yeah. again, because you're doing it because it's just, you're happy to do it. And again, obviously if you're, if I'm always doing and giving value and asking nothing in return and it's never returned back, then obviously it's a one way relationship yeah. and that's going to feel itself out. Exactly. But, but, but like you said, Matt, it's dig your well before you thirsty. That's what I tell people. Dig your well before you thirsty. Cause it will come a time. Even if you have, it's 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 fan, it's, it's feast time, right? It's abundance. Yeah. See, it's success is like this: the same people mm -hmm. you see going up, the same people you see going down. It's it's a cyclical, right? It's not yeah. not gonna get to success and just be woo smooth. No, you're going to lose that. You're going to make a bad investment. Somebody, somebody's going to take it. Somebody may die. Health reasons, like it's all these things. So you got to to get it. You know, uh, planting seeds. And digging your well before you thirst, because like you said, it is right. It is reciprocal. I do know that. All right, cool. I build up. I'm gonna do this. I don't need to ask of Matt, right? But I do. In the back of my mind, eventually, that all right, cool. If I need anybody, because I've ne never really had people I can count on. I didn't have investors or people that all right do this. But if I said all right, cool. Let me just. I know people relationships or everything. Let me go add value to as many people as I can, and then when I need something or if I, I'm in a drought, I need. Some, I definitely got somebody that's gonna help me. So it's it's just uh it's 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 digging well before you before you're thirsty. Like you're right, you know, like 
Yeah. Well, man, I know I've I've taken up a couple hours of, of our conversation here. Um, hey, this is this is awesome, Matt. Like this is what I've been wanting to uh, wanting to do, you know. And I'm glad we got so much content from this. I'm glad we got uh, we can probably break so many. Yeah, we're, we're, we should keep the VA happy for a couple of weeks, maybe yeah. with the with the set. Yeah. The the cool part again, I think this, you know, again, I'm sitting here. I've seen some of your content where you're doing this like public speaking to try to help like, again, mindset from a young age and getting the foundation there for, you know, young men and, and these young boys. I saw some of this and I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. I love this. And I saw how passionate you were in some of these videos on, again, on your, your posts. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is awesome. Like, these are like, this is stuff that energizes me. I'm like, fuck it. You know what? Like I, you know, I got pulled away over here, maybe focusing on a, a starting a new business. Right. But it's like it kind of nudges you back to be energized in core values and things that I, I value. And I'm just sitting here and I can't help but think like you're, you know, you were all again, your energy in that video. Again, I don't know if it was a year ago, five years ago. But like you said, like you're a healthier version now and you're you're continuing. I'm like, now what if this version of Rob now, 50, 45 pounds lighter, more energetic, healthier? Like, again, I, you're even more dialed in and you go back and you do that same kind of talk to those boys. Like, what difference are you going to bring to to that group? And again, and even though the product was probably awesome, whenever that was, I'm like, what's version, you know, 3.0 or 2.0 going to be right. doing what you do with the health that's, you know, kind of going up the mountain to a better spot. So that's, that's the exciting or or what's your business capacity going forward because again the health is behind it that's, that's a cool part i can't wait to see mm-hmm right way better it's um yeah it's 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 amazing you know what i'm saying like just eating right taking up i wish i would have been on this 20 years ago but the great thing people listening now i hope you can see that you know it's it's something that you know is so great and it just makes you younger and you age backwards and you know, it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. You know, it's a beautiful thing. So, it's gonna those talks are gonna be even better now because I don't have any brain fog. I don't have any, you know, like it's well, much better. If you, I always say to patients, like in nine, in a year from now, ninety percent of your cells are gonna be different. They're gonna be new. They're gonna be rebuilt. You can change the soil, water them, and fertilize them with a much better environment, or you can keep doing what you're doing. But they're going to, so you have a huge array of opportunity in a year from now. If you provide your body with the right things, you can become a completely different person from a health standpoint, from an energy standpoint. It may, it's not going to be necessarily overnight. It doesn't mean it's going to take months. But again, but if you start putting the right things into your, your environment or you start giving your body, the plant, the right things, things can be drastically different. When we would do a bunch, we, we still, I love doing health talks. I like trying to get people thinking. And I would always just put a picture of a plant up in the corner and it'd just be a wilting plant. And I'm like, you know, what's this plant need? And people would give such better answers to a picture of a plant than their health. Oh, it needs sunlight. Oh, it needs better water. Or the soil might be damaging it. The soil's bad. It's like, ah, oh, it needs better food. It needs better nutrition. Got too much of something. It's got an excess of light. And I just and I just go I'm like you just did a better assessment of this plant picture than you do to yourself, right? It's kind of like, do you have too much of something, too little of something? Like, just start taking that mindset and applying it to yourself as if like, do I is there anything I might be doing too much of? Am I not doing enough of certain things? Am I overindulging in certain things? Like, if people just took that approach to their health, you'd be surprised what you start to even self become aware of by just taking that simple approach. So. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's good all right man well i again i'm gonna stop this before we go another three hours and uh, <laughs> make, make the uh, podcast a, a 12 hour marathon so right 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 i appreciate you man i'm gonna give us a little sign off but i'll just uh let's touch base after here so okay. anyways i appreciate you uh this is again a very great podcast huge energy uh rob coates health entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, but to me, it's just such a great mindset. I think that's the the biggest thing that, you know, the mindset creates the success in, in everything you do. And again, I respect you, you know, I, you know, the dad you are, I see that. I, again, there's so many aspects of respect towards you. So again, 
I appreciate you jumping on, giving us uh, two hours of your time. It's definitely highly valued. And I hope people take away something very, very meaningful. If it's just one thing, I, I'm, I'm happy that's going to be an impactful thing. So until next time, we'll, uh, we'll jump on. And again, I, I'd love to take one subject out of the two hours and maybe we just focus on one area next time and, and go deeper. So. I'm ready. Hey, I'm ready. I'm ready too. You know, I still got a lot more to get out of my chest. So yeah, let me know. My lighting will be great. Everything will be, I'll be ready. You know, excited. I mean, I'll have to fly out to Miami and we can do it on the beach or something in person. Oh. Way, way better, way better backdrop than this. And we don't have to worry about the sun. <laughs> I'm ready. Whatever you are. We'll talk to you soon, sir. All right.